donate things and money. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to Sloth and Friends. Oh, yeah. Today we're going to be doing a session zero for our new campaign setting. For some reason, Dylan and Luke are here. Pull me back your imagination. Which means I guess they don't want to play, so. No, speak of them. Oh. Summon them. Delay. Yeah, so. What do you mean? Yes, so. <laughs> you don't behave. I told they come to the and then and then walk over to the and then. Yeah, she just. I don't know. We're doing D&D. I'm going to have time to give her a bath right now. Oh, you chose to roll on it, not me. Holy shit, literally. 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 Anyway, today will be the session zero and a like kind of like starts into their adventure through the world of Gulkreen. Or as it's known in the normal tongue of people, the Gulch. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Whistle, whistle, whistle. <laughs> it's the best I know. It's the best you got. I mean. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Speaking of one piece, I had, I think I had two containers sitting at my house. Yeah. Fuck off, one piece. Fuck off, one piece. <laughs> that tastes like straight up coffee. Have you had it cold? No, it tastes like chocolate. It tastes like chocolate. It tastes better after you freeze it. Well, not freeze it, but put it in the like, fridge. It's just I don't like take it. Tag it. Off. Where did my dice fry go? Also, thank this you for letting me, thank you for letting me use your dice. Your dice helped me a lot with my steps. So you the good ones. <laughs> you may be asking yourself some questions. Like what is the gulch? Why is the gulch? Who is the gulch? My only question is my dice. And how is If you were here, you know where your dice went, Dylan. <laughs> I was here last week, I knew where they were. That was last week. Today is now. Today, today is, is today. Now. So the gulch. Well, it's a very sandy place. A lot of dust. And it sits at the base of the world tree, the base of Yggdrasil. It sits upon the roots. It is a very... What are you guys doing? He's trying to rob you. You guys are fucking with me. This is why I take my dice home, Dylan. This is why I take my dice home. I'll start taking them home again, how? Also, um... Yeah, I'm going to throw these anywhere or... Oh, you can just set them over there. I don't know why. Oh, you got a dehydrator. That is Connors. Nice. You made, tried to make banana chips. How'd those turn out? Not. Okay. Yeah, I, I ate know. most of them, and then I just wanted to get them to chips, but I made a chewy recipe because I was like, oh, chewy sounds nice. And then, they, yeah, they were chewy. Well, they did it. So I'm going to give we'll later, a little history the to the world real quick. Mark said about the minis. And... This is going to be their first time hearing it, too. This and many others spread throughout. The many material planes managed by uh, different gods, goddesses, and beings alike. They all decided that humanity and their creations, they just... They weren't good. In fact, they were bad. 
now instead of trying to reform them or do what most people think you would do with a child and try to teach it right from wrong, they decided to give up. And the separations between the different material planes no longer existed. But there is also seemingly, oh god. Yes, she is completely breaking my co concentration. Sorry, <laughs> shut up. So, with that happening, the space between them turned into this vast ocean. A bubbling, roiling, just caustic soup of in lack of better terms, disgusting dimensional liquid. An indefinite, an indefinite, extremely large amount of distance still separates these different material planes. But physically now, the distance is there, not metaphysically. And the material planes were cast to the roots of Yggdrasil, where the rest of the unwanted go in the World Tree hierarchy. It's where the giants and their descendants fell to after their reign was over. And with that, the natives of this peat land, the giants, the descendants of them, if you will, were confused. The people showed up out of nowhere. A lot of them ruined the ecosystems in the world around them. There are no real gods to speak of, but some beings did commiserate with the plight of man and chose to stay behind, for better or for worse. And after years of magic being bereft and lessened and forgotten, something was found deep within the earth itself that had been almost completely wrung dry due to the elven lust for natural magics. Something that was almost a trace of the magic that was once lost that's there, but in a finite amount. What little enrichment of the lands existed in a general sense, were stripped mined out for this trace. This taste of magic. Eventually, though still common, more common than people even thought, what it did to the little bit of nature and environment the last that was still there even destroyed it further. Because this is what was keeping it alive in most of the cases. So majority of this continent now is nothing but dust, desert, and a bleak, but hardy people emerge from it. The descendants of giants are considered the natives of this place, but over a couple thousand years, others have come and made it home as well. There are no hard structures like this is where the dwarfs live, this is where the gnomes live. Nothing like that. In fact, I would say this is the way the world of D&D would be if everyone was, if all they were, if they were all created at the same time. So instead of languages like Dwarven, Namish, Halfling, those all kind of devolved into multiple dialects of this continent. Now, for you guys to, I would, I, you should probably keep a note of this, I'm going to tell you what those dialects are.
The first one to keep in mind is the Charland dialect, spelled like char and then land. It is where a lot of the elves ended up landing when they were cast from the material plane proper. This is the land where most of the trace is gone, but it is where most of that industry began. So, a lot of people live here in this country of Charland. And that is where we will be starting our adventure. The native peoples that call it home, the descendants, are the Rama. They are the descendants of the true Titans. And little is known about them because it has been a couple thousand years and most of their descendants don't even know their own traditions. A few tribes remain, though solidary, sol solitary and Woefully, do they ever interact with any outsiders? Directly to the west of Charland is Ramik. This is where the denizens of Charland took their industry to after the trace had dried up in their own land. Once a place, kind of it's like a step where the descendants of hill giants kind of roamed in a nomadic state. Now is a very craggy, almost falling apart landscape where holes that go up with the roots can be seen. Some say the holes go on forever. Some say they definitely have to end somewhere. Very few have climbed even a mile down and come out alive. Not many people call this place home. But those that do, enjoy the solidarity. And tend to make it meek out an eager, a meager living on the rocky step that is left where maybe they find a bit of trace or what was left in the ground and can maybe farm a little bit off of it. But mainly this place is made up of bandits and the less to do. This place has no true government or governance at all. No real law, so it's a safe haven for those that don't want to be seen or followed. To the southwest of the continent is a place known as the Wan. When the trades had dried up in Ramik, they sought purchase by going south. And they were met with a militarized force they were not prepared for. Hobgoblins and bugbears and a few other goblinoids defended this land with very sharp curved blades and a strange militaristic outfit that no one had seen. Combined with the master craftsmen that were the stone giant descendants that lived here, the gentle stone giants helped the hobgoblins in their already masterful craft of blade and pistol take on an even further evolution. And to this day, the borders of this small country are protected, and outsiders are allowed in for trade and barter, but you will be watched. No violence is allowed under any circumstances. 
An argument is fine, but physical altercation is seen as one of the worst things you can do. In the central south of the continent is a large sprawling land known as El Crete. Towards its southern end, southern end, there was an abundance of trace. Some unknown force protects it. This force is known as the Dudek, or the Misted Man. In the mountains to the north, the descendants of the fog and cloud giants take up residency. Many people that try to go through the mountain or near it don't come back. But the risk is well worth it because an abundance of trace lies in them bare hills. And the nomadic tribes of sand giants, giants as well, sorry, the descendants of sand giants, also find themselves wandering these, this desert beyond the mountains. They sell themselves out as mercenaries and other things in the modern era. They are one of the few nomadic tribes that can actually go through the land of stone men that separates the north from the south, where giant hawking forms of what the sand giants say of their ancestors loom on the horizon. Pockets of water scarce, even in this place. And knowing how to avoid the spirits that roam there are key in getting across. Uonten is to the east of this, uh, east of Elkrate. It is a land of spirits. It is said that the fathers, the spirits of the fathers roam that land. People do occasionally come out of there. Strangely, though, none of them are a human, mechanized man imbued with the soul of the living, seemingly, tend to wander from Untoam. But there is a tale of one man who supposedly left with an infusion of trace that left him special, almost a god among men. But that's just an, the legend of Willie Tim. Nobody else supposedly has ever made it out of Boontong. And then there is Scapoline. All those with scale can call this place their home. And why I say scales, I mean scales. Kobolds, dragonborn, lizard folk, those that have dragons, those that trace their ancestry to dragons. Yeah, a lot of them are born here, as it is the only denizens that are allowed here in this country. But upon... And, well, between the time between a 5th and 16th birthday, the residents of Scapoline are allowed to actually venture out of the country and explore the greater continent. But they must return before their 16th birthday. Otherwise, they are banned from scaffolding. The use of trace is also forbidden in this land. Trade and barter are what keep its economy alive. And the people in it want to not promote things. Unlike most of this country, this continent, there's vegetation here. There's life. And it's all attributed to the Draconic Protector that calls this place home. No one knows her name. Or even what kind of dragon she is, or even if she is truly a dragon. But those that try to enter Scapoline uninvited always find themselves lost. And unable to find a path leading into the country. So that's a general overview of the continent, the land that eventually will be taking place in. 
But there's one other rumor you should know. It is said that to the far north, beyond the roiling dimensional ocean, if you will, the base of the world tree can be found. And rumor has it that some have climbed it to the realm of the gods. So with that in mind, are there any questions you guys would like to ask about the world before we get into like the meat of your characters? Uh, I'm just going to finish writing stuff off. I don't really have magic that can write anymore. So, from a mechanical point of view, I decided to kind of revamp the magic system for 5e. Spell slots aren't a thing. Instead, they are replaced by a consumable item. That is also the currency of this land, called Shrift and its Trace. So, our casters in the party can, in theory, have much more availability of spells to them, regardless of class or even spell level. You can cast it a spell at a higher level, and you're not of a level to cast it, there's a chance of spell failure. And each bead is consumed upon use. Now, where did I put the notes for this? I have a thing, hold on. So for all those listening in and who might be confused by that, what are you gonna do? Uh, before, gonna fuck you. <laughs> think of these like spell slots from an approach differently. Yes, they're essentially the concept of spell slot, but instead of regenerating on a short rest and you getting a certain amount, it's about you making sure, you, like getting them, you can have them as a resource you can use on demand at any time. <clears throat> Now, to imbue them with a spell, it doesn't take 10 minutes. So it does require a little bit of fourth, like, foresight preparation. If, like, let's say you know, oh, I'm going to be going to fight people. Maybe you should make a bunch of them that have lightning bolts in it. Now, the different kinds of trace that can be found are trace dust, which is the normal residual amount that is used to convert into trace beads and use as a general currency. There are trace stones, which are basically a permanent version of that spell. If you find a trace stone of, let's say, fireball, you will always be able to cast fireball. That's just how that's going to work. You can never cast it at a higher level or lower level than what's in the stone. But you always have fireball at your disposal. Then there are trace hearts. Trace hearts are actually going to dictate the leveling system beyond three. So let's say I have a trace heart equipped that gets me up to level five. I'm level five. It takes a 24 hour period to attune to this item and has its own special attunement slot, so it doesn't count towards the items you're attuned to. It also can be stolen from you. You won't notice it's gone until 24 hours have passed, or unless you check, obviously. But your level, le the level you up, the level up doesn't fade away until 24 hours after it's off your person. So I recommend making copies of your characters versus just leveling them up face. But you will be able to get to the level three naturally. Sweet. Any questions so far? How do racial abilities and class abilities work? Do you still need this trace stuff? Well, Luke. You want to activate your samurai ability. Go ahead and do that. 
So let's say as our magical thinker. Like I said, I would prefer if you, instead of giving magic for your explanation of how things work, if you're an artificer, like, since we have two artificers in the party so far. We have two artificers? Make it four. We almost had three. Um, if you could, like I said, make it more so where it's mechanically yeah, based yeah. versus magic. Like, the, I don't want a lot of the time the reason to just be because of magic. Okay. That's all I'm asking. So... If I, I make it, it mechanically, I'm just that good of an inventor. Exactly. It doesn't have to make sense either. If you want to, if literally just, to, I'm not going to make you like make your perpetual motion machine actually function. I'm literally just going to, you could say, hey, so I found this hamster that really likes to run and I put it in a ball. I would accept that as an answer. It's all power of pharmacy. That's what I'm saying. Like, I want fantasy science here. Well, I want water-powered lanterns. There you go. I'm fine with, like, that's what I'm saying. I want you guys to let that create the power of land. Sand powered lanterns. How are you starting the, what technology level in general? Water is exposed to it. This is a steam pump western. I'll repeat that. This is a steam pump western. So, so it's steam you can get water. Yeah, I didn't say there wasn't water. There's just not a lot of it. It's so what? Red water. Have good seals in your equipment, boys. Oh. What's the rate of exchange? <laughs> one gold is one ounce of trace. So basically, right. one one gold equals one trace dust. So, how much trace dust does it take to make a trace still? That was my own question. It takes. If we go through the kills. One ounce of trace to make one trace stone. Okay. But that is how to make them is a guarded secret of the guild. So you can buy them at shops if they are selling them. You can also buy them from the guild or have your trace converted into that for free. If you are part of the guild. If you're not part of the guild, they do charge a fee. Um can you break a trace stone down into trace dust? Or a trace heart with trace dust? Yes. Okay. Trace hearts are exceedingly valuable, and so are trace stones, though, so I don't recommend it. Oh, trace stones, not trace beads. The beads you yeah, the, the beads can be converted back into dust if you would like. It just takes a, a mortar and pestle to do that. Ah. <laughs> like, like in Cyberpunk 2020, costs 10,000 new yen to get like a cybernetic, but. To like increase your attractions, but to lower your attractions straight away is a cost of being in Can you make a trace heart? No. Trace stones and trace hearts you cannot craft. I know we talked about that last Friday night, but this is everybody else knows. I have a question again. Go for it. Have you played Endless Legends? Nope. Okay, now I thought about it. If Mackie plays it, but I never I never got around to buying it. We should play it sometime. Not necessarily on the screen. It doesn't look fun. I know what it is. So, as far as casters go, by the way, oh. more so what caster class you pick is more to dictate what style of caster you want to be, more so than anything else. So, <laughs> let that be your kind of choice. If you want to be a warlock, just you don't have, like, there's nobody you really made a pact with or anything. Unless you really want to have them in, like something like that involved, I'd be more than willing to do it. You but you, I'm saying it's not a necessity. Same thing with wizards. You don't have to have a, like a conventional spellbook if you don't want either. You can have, I want you to have like spellbooks. That's what makes wizards better. That's their whole shtick is they can learn flat like basically any spell. So we gotta have boots that make the sound of wind when I run or walk. But not the fear of sword remains. No, you but, can use meta magic on trace on uh, spells you cast and trace beads. Yeah, any spell you cast and trace beads. Yep. Meta magic is the bread and butter of a sorcerer. That's something they get to do. Similar to no, no, warlocks, no. you still have the oh, last no. traits you get. Exactly. Warlocks with unlimited spell slots. Let that sink in. How was it for guys? I don't remember. Isn't that just. If the fighter gets 
Both of these traits they have to be a caster. You cannot okay. cast unless you're a caster. I'm not gonna work so, with magic this game. So if I was the purple dragon knight class, I could cast magic, so that No. Yes. Purple Dragon Knights don't cast, that's Eldritch Knight. Oh Eldritch Knight has in this. And yes, you could have an Eldritch Knight. So wouldn't you then technically just be a girl? No. You'd be an Eldritch Knight. You know, purple dragon knights are basically people went I like Warlords from 40, so purple. with the code scram they're like shit shit, we need to add this. What purple dragon knights are just purple dragon knights? No. Well, they're they're like fighters, but they both not the purple dragon knights. Those don't are a thing because the purple dragon knights are an order of people, not so much representative of a dragon. Yeah, they're from Forgotten. Also, can you close the blind map? There are bannerets in non the Not a good idea. I got the <laughs> mine. <laughs> So, are there any, any other questions we need to cover before we like, try to get into the building of the characters? Um, if we play druids, what animals can we turn into? No, oh, me and Matt already kind of had it. I'm going to talk to Matt about it, and Why if anyone wants to play the druid, they can. Um, well, they're animals, that's what I'm captives. Gonna, like, I'm going to talk to the camera. I'm saying that I know I'm going to touch on later, but I don't need to answer it right now. I know I'm going to touch on that later. I will ask what I can turn into when people tell me. No, I'm going to genuinely answer the question in full, like in a bit. That was on my list. Are, are there any like hot interculture conflicts we should know about? Like, like is the nation of Charlie despised by the nation of uh, Oland? So, scuffing. Scoffling, however you me out. I'm still trying to decide the pronunciation for it, but the land of scales. They obviously don't want people in their land. Who want him? No one comes out of it. And the descendants of giants generally have a disdain for those who don't respect their traditions and, you know, showed up and destroyed their land. And the human but what? Oh, humans? I don't mean, not a thing. Eh, humans didn't last too long in this high person environment. Those that did are pretty hard hardy though. Humans are not the dominant race at all in this setting. Elves and dwarves have lived outlived most others. Oops. And most humans fell into half elf heritage at this point. Being a full blooded human is actually kind of weird and rare. Shit, I don't know what we're going to do. I want to be special. I want to be special. Yeah, me too. I want to be a human. I'm, I am human. Maybe you're a human. Fuck being a human. You can be whatever you want. I've been that for years. Yeah, you're the rich thing I want. I've been a human for 23 years of my life, and I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> Why can't I? I'd rather be now? anything. Hold on. Okay. Okay, right, so I need more, like, careful. Okay, pistols. Oh yeah, firearms are, it's a steampunk weapon, so firearms the, are 100%. The pistol or the gun? Anything that's not like a modern, like, or an automatic, basically. Like, no modern weapon. You can't have an anti-matter rifle, but you can't have a laser action rifle. I'm not saying you can't have a laser, you're just gonna have to invent a laser. Laser pistol. Just, just have a You're gonna have to invent that laser. Oh, just do what they did in because the Vicarus. What's the difference between pistol and pistol, but with Matthew Mercer? As a uh, so I am going to be using the firearm, like, fumble tables and stuff that is in the Mercer group for the Gunslinger. So, basically, they some sometimes they have different DPS values and stuff, because one is meant for D20 Modern, where the other is meant for, like, D&D. &D. What class is Gunslinger under? Fighter. Fighter. And you won't see them, but... Basically, the gunslinger class is kind of it. Like in the way it's worded, you'll have to look up like what specific. Guns it's pretty simple. Let's say let's say you roll a d the I'll just fumble do table. A full fledged artificer. The fumble table and still pretty... use guns. Yeah, no, you can use guns and not be a gunslinger. Okay, that's not the issue here. I'm using the fumble like fumble rolls that they have with it. Okay. So like, you roll a d twenty, you get I think it's depending. <laughs> most of the time, it's four. Um, four or lower, you get a misfire. And then a one is a failure that needs to be like repaired on the spot. Otherwise, your weapon is considered unusable. Which is something that happened in the last campaign. 
Blunderbuss. Blunderbuss. Um, is there an overall government, or is it just a smaller government? So, Charlin kind of has the most influence, as it is the largest kind of people state. And they are the kind of home base of operations for the guild, which is a collective of people who try to do adventuring work, whether for good or evil. It's your very standard adventures guild. The brain that's an effort thing. The guild. That is fantastic. Yeah, they don't really have a name because it's just a guild. It's just everyone. Yeah, it's the guild. It's, it's a collective that chooses to it's try and do better in this shitty place. If people need help, they'll go do it. And you get and the guild then pays the people who go do it. As you are members of the guild. So the guild kind of freelances work out the people who sign up with them. So it doesn't hurt to be um... No, actually it's very beneficial. There are mercenary companies and things that exist, but those are more so hired out by people who are rich or have some sort of polar influence. They want a private army. But thank you, Bezos. Um, Scotland, the overseeing government, is obviously the one dragon. Um, Elkrate and Ramik both don't really have a government, as their populations are either mainly nomadic or very much town-centric. Like, you go to a town, there might be a mayor, a sheriff that keeps the role, whatever, but... Oh, shut up. There's nothing like. Because it's fucking hot out. Because it cares for Bill. Yeah, it's literally like it's just it's one of those things where she just like wanted to go miss like she just chooses when she wants when she wants to misbehave. Yeah. It's all when it's very huh. It's all Elkrate and Ramik, they're tra- they like I said they're very much town based in governments where it's like one town that can be different than the next town. Standard Western towns. More so like lawless Western place. Ever like then the native populations are nomadic, so they didn't really have a form of government in the first place outside of their tribes and their families and clans. Now so the land of Iwan is overseen by the joint force of hobgoblins and stone giants. The stone giants and the goblinoids both heavily just want peace in their land. And there's a governing body to oversee that that is militaristic. But that's the far as governance goes. So no violence physically is permitted, and people are generally encouraged not to be pieces of shit. Whether by getting kicked by one of the guards or being sternly told by somebody. Disappointing somebody. And it won't him in the mystery. So, necrofissers, meaning they're um, creating chemical horrors, monstrosities, whatever you want to call what them. What about it? You don't need trace for that, do you? No, you don't. Trace is, trace is strictly a replacement for spell slots, basically. That's right. You need to look at it. That's it. Spell slots and gold. Spell slots and gold. Thank you, Matt. That's really all it is. And you're like, I, we're going to have the leveling system with that, too. But like, like I said, that, that's all the things you got to look at. Right. I know you said you were debating on it. For your class features, you don't need trace. Right, I know you said something last Friday about thinking, not sure yet, so I just wanted to check. Yeah, we do not need trace for that. Okay. This is a really good call. I know. Alright. So, any more, like, questions about the world in general? No. Alright, so we can... So, yeah. I was gonna say, um, calendar. That's a good question. I remember reading a calendar. Oh my gosh, it's almost like I made. I did actually make one for this place. You made one for every place. So the calendar of Gold Creek. It's actually fairly simple. The season we are starting in 
is called clear. And they're not really time-based so much as seasonally based as this calendar is. For clear, eventually the sun becomes intense. And this usually takes around 100 to 150 days or so. And then people eventually consider the season of scorch to have begun. Scorch is when the dust in the sky had settled to the point where there were no clouds to kind of cover the land and so wait, the sun is beating down intensely. So clear and scorch are two separate seasons where the sun's intense? So clear, the sun isn't as intense. There are clouds and dust and other than possibly slight precipitation in the sky that make it to where it isn't 150 degrees and not a constant sunlight. Because during scorch, it's just daytime. So it's like we're in Alaska. Yes. And it reaches temperatures of 120 to 150 degrees. It's fair. Alaska. And then after scorch comes the dusty season where a lot of the vegetation and other things and whatever have you that was there just burnt and the dust becomes prevalent. It starts getting kicked up, which will last for about 30 to 40 days what is in the sky. Called? Dusty. Dusty. It's, a du it's the dusty season. <clears throat> so clear scorch, dust, and dust is what? Dust starts getting kicked up into the sky and kind of obscuring the sun in this weird almost state of twilight, where dim light is the lighting it is outside. And it does get cooler progressively, like a volcanic eruption would do to the Earth today, as the, cloud, the atmosphere would be clouded with ash. And it begins to cool down drastically towards that end of dust, the dusty season, which then leads to the dark season. It's cold and dark. No light, besides maybe what you might have on your hip. And potentially the very faint light of the moon that passes by the dust storms in the atmosphere continue to rage. And that also lasts about 100, 120 days. And then as that dust begins to fall back to Earth or out into the vast ocean of goop around you, the cycle continues back into clear then scorch, then dusty, and follows in that pattern. And all the days are about 150. So clear lasts about 120 to like 100, like 100 to 120 days, give or take. Scorch lasts about 60 to 80. Dusty, the dusty season lasts. 60 to 80. 60 to 80. 60 to 80. And dusty lasts about. 40 to 60, give or take. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, take your Yeah, you're, you're blazing through these things. Dusty lasts about 40 to 60. 60, okay. And dark lasts about 100 to 120. Thank you. Days, days, days. Conveniently, the guild sought to kind of make an official calendar. So though it might be less hot than you would expect from Scorch, it can still be clear, or it can still be Scorch. Officially, there are 120 days of clear. Well, I'm just going to send, I can just send you guys the calendar. The last time I did it, though, you guys decided not to look at it. So. That's not true, I can look at it. <laughs> I got a vague idea of when everything was. There are no holidays or anything, by the way, that are like officially out there. Does that mean we can't start them? Well, people like to celebrate. People's birthdays are actually large things of celebration, anniversaries for town being founded, things like that. Does that mean we can't start national holidays? We can try. We can be the people that start them. We shall start right. national. Yeah. We could start our own government. So, any other? We will be what? government, guys. 
Uh, how long do weeks run? I seem to ten days. Days. Yes, you put them on a ten days. Ten, ten day flat. Ten. One to ten, and then the one starts, and they they aren't don't have names either. It's just one to ten. Oh, that's legit what they're called. That's awesome. Yes. It is the first day of the week, the second day of the week. And so no doubt, many people argue as to what day of the week it actually is, and nobody has the same answer. Most people don't even really have a need for that kind of record keeping, sadly. And that is why you will never be successful, personally, not looking at. Depends on where you're from. As I point to Charland, a lot of people point that run businesses use it. People in the city tend to know what day it is, but the farther you go out into the Lace, less people care. Let's see what it is. All right. I sent you guys the calendar via email. Any other questions? Can I get the campaign notes? No. Can we get a copy of the map sent to us? Yeah. Rad. Right. Uh... What are their missions supposed to be? With the I I I haven't gotten there yet. I want you guys to ask general questions of the world right now, and then we'll move into other things. Oh, I do have a question. All right, go for it. Okay. With the magical tinkering, are my limitations specifically to the bulletins they have, or do I get to expand their horizons? It's just like spells. I'm more than willing to work with you, Connor. You, you you should know this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what's the general outlook of people in this world? It seems weaker than I could. People generally It's it's weird, right? Because you would think, oh god, this place sucks. The goblinoid country with the with the stone giants, they are more than well off and happy. Scaflin, they know it's not very popular there. It's well fed and happy. Ramik and Charland. Ramik has, in a general sense, kind of a boom town bust kind of feel. Whereas Charland has a lot of industry. Even though Trace is abundant, it is also not. There are water farms continuously seeking innovation on ways to harvest water. People are trying to one up the next person in their like line of competition. There's a constant moving forward. That is the driving industry of Charlotte. The people, I'm not saying some of them have lived hard lives, but they also seek to ever improve. In a sense, it is the American dream that has been lost in the modern era. This is a place where anybody can get ahead with enough hard work and a good attitude. Or sharpness. So a lot of people tend to keep their head held high and pride in what they do and don't let the world beat them down. So the people generally are upbeat and in a good vibe, good headspace. I think if anything else I can add to like, get the viewers to know all about the world. What's the main way of travel? I know usually through D and D it's horse carts stuff like that, but do we have steam bait steam? Because you said steampunk, so is this steam powered cars stuff like that? Um, you ever watched Trigun? No. You're the only one in this room. Me and Connor. Gun. If you've ever watched Trigun, and mechanical horses, mechanical. They can have a uh, listen. You can have something pulled by a buggy. That animal's probably going to overheat way faster than. A vehicle will. Steam pump. So Steam that, pump. that that should tell you what the main mode of transportation is. Right, but I was wondering, yeah, like, is, like, well, is it like, yeah, like Maggie said, motorcycles, cars, or is it just like mechanical horses drawn by carts and stuff? On a fork, yeah, stuff. Is it easier to make a mechanical horse or put two wheels on something? I don't know. I'm a skilled artificer, baby. You tell me. Well, from a common sense engineering standpoint, I'd say the wheels are a lot easier to grab than a mechanism of galloping. Okay. <laughs> but no, I, I would say wheel-based travel is super common. Nice. Um, Air-based travel does exist, though it is extremely volatile. And people really haven't figured out how to not explode up there. It gets really hot. The nice. higher it can get. Mentioning that, that actually does make me curious. Are there railways? 
Are there sh sand tornadoes? No. What? No sand nobody, tornadoes? Nobody has really sought the need for a railroad. Yes. And that could be due to reasons it could not be. That would more depend on either coming back around or like getting in the know of that particular the the trade the trade the trade system that does exist in Charland and it's outer places as well. I should be a corpse. Player. Connor, we're going to kidnap you and we drag it into the world. We're going to use it in the boiler for a train. Yes. We'll have a bullet train. Are there any other general questions about the world? John Henry. I will take that as a note. That's what everybody said. All right. So, now... Let me just save a JPEG here. This is where the fuck. Let me save a JPEG of the map. But this is where the fuck begins. We like we got out of the build. Like what are the build requirements? You are actually going to do that on your trip book where you're going right now. Okay. So why are you guys going to the guild in the first place? It's probably a question that you probably didn't think I had an answer to. Uh, yeah, I thought you were asking that. Oh, I do have, I have an answer for you, in fact. Wow. The DM has given me an answer for you. This is better. See? Thank you. Kind of rude, you know? You guys, through happenstance or dumb luck, are compatible with traits in a way that no one else is. This is an RPG. Most people can develop a certain level of skill in combat or other to do very incredible things. Those that have an affinity towards traits can actually utilize a trace heart and go even further. Okay, okay, it was better than I thought it was going to be. Right. Most of them seek to go to the guild, as this is the place where a culmination of those people are. And the guild will reward you with trace hearts if you show that you genuinely are contributing. And not, you don't have to be helping the world so much as contributing to the guild and its coffers. The guild, for the most part, is the benevolent one, so... That's what is kind of drawing you into, that's why you're in this caravan in the first place. Everyone else around you, these other chuckle fucks. Now this caravan isn't just people looking to go join the guild. A lot of them were just going to the same city you are. And you join that wagon train. Ruby Trail is where you're heading. That's where the nearest guild office was to all of you at the moment. What are trace stones again? Trace stones are the ones with permanent spells in them. Then there's trace beads, which are the glass form of a trace stone, which allow you to do spells. Trace dust is your general currency. Oh, right. And then trace hearts are the levels. Ooh. Oh, come on. That's better. What was I? Going on about you, you have to be Well, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to get to that yet, but it got brought up. Sorry. Oh, the reason why that we're going to the guild, like we're being, yeah, that, no, that got brought up, and I was gonna say something like before that, then I got distracted with that. Yeah, well, I don't remember. So, oh, yeah, I was gonna get more individual with your characters. So, let's kind of more flesh out the characters now, backstory-wise, too, and I'm more than happy if you have to say we know each other. You've at least known each other for about, I would say, 50 days or so. Since the caravan started? Well, some of you might have been picked up along the way. Yeah. Who knows? But we're going to talk about that now in a more in-depth setting, so this is where the individual part of session one kind of, session zero kind of comes in, so... Let's start with either Sammy or Mackie. Who wants to go first? Mackie first. 
Well, gee, thanks, asshole. <laughs> the prop, the, the benefit sitting next to me, Mackie. Indeed. To my right hand. And also, I can peek on your nose. But you all the time, don't you? Hey. Your character and yeah. who they are. If you could just, if you have anything in, like, a background in mind or a little bit of a tale to tale, tale to tell, you can tell it now. I have a name, a character build, and I have a general idea of what drives them. Okay. No, that's not. So, their name is Garm, although they generally go by a pseudonym uh, wherever they can, so that people can't follow them. His name is, his friend's name is Garm, everyone else knows him as Joseph. Yes. It's, everyone else knows him as Joseph. His name's Michael. Um, that guy over there. The character build, the cool gunslinger, um, kind of hasn't lived out in the wider world for very long. Uh, you mentioned, like, people generally need to stick all in around, like, five? You could have been born outside of it, too, but... It could have been, but I also... I plan on retiring this character in Scafali and if we ever get to a point where our character is fought for time. So you mean you're from Scafali? Mm -hmm. they, they've done some shady business, highway robbery, and uh, at some point, for whatever reason, they began to get this feeling of looming dread that something was out to kill them. And so they have gotten out of business said goodbye to the potential friends and enemies in this little bandit group he worked with. Now he is on the way to the guild, hoping that they will provide... Loki hoping they will provide some sort of protection from this impending feeling of doom okay. that he's been feeling. Now, quick question. Is your, for lack of a better term, rum spring from Skaldum up, or is it still maintained? It's Where are you in that five-year to 16-year period? It is early in that period. He's he knows some of the ropes of the wasteland in general, but hasn't he hasn't experienced more than a small part of it. Okay. But like he's been he's been camped out for like a few months in a maze of ambushing like low level traps so, as he comes through. Let's say you only been out for two seasons then. Does that work? That'd be roughly like almost four hundred to six hundred days. That does work. Okay, so you've been through two cycles. Sorry, I meant to say cycles, but... Yeah. Long enough to know yeah. the contacts. As for so, for... you have plenty of seasons to return if you want to. It's, this place is very different from your homeland. Scuffling has vegetation, life to it. People don't really argue or fight. It's kind of boring in a, uto in a utopia kind of way, you know what I mean? <laughs> but you're allowed to leave. So, well, to do to see what is the outside is like. And in your experience, most people came back with looks of horror on their face fairly quickly. But others didn't return at all. And maybe that got the gears turning. Now, in Scapoline, you... Would you like to grow up in like a larger city, smaller town? What do you kind of want parents-wise? Let's talk about uh, that. I have no idea parents-wise. Zero idea. Um, generic car- if it's, it's too far figures for parents. If it's not important, honestly, like that's what I'm saying. Like you could have parents who loved you, were supportive. They don't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be- not every backstory has to have your parents dead in the fire, so. I don't know. This is this is a lane game. Your parents are there and waiting. Probably gave you a packed lunch on your way out. Now, larger town or smaller town? What are you looking at? Town, city, village? Smaller. Okay. So, you coming from a smaller town probably didn't have a large perspective. And this wasteland is scary to that. You were given what you have. Essentially, you said clothes, some stuff to go out on. Your parents gave you, honestly, a little bit too much food. But, you know, you've never had to ration water or food. Or ration food. Exactly, so. Oh, that desert journey was kind of rough. <laughs> but you made it. And. Um, looking for time. Check. 
Okay. Weirdly enough, this leader of this caravan has always just, it's been a person you actually knew. He, he originally saw you just kind of dumb, dumped on a trail, just completely slumped, you're out of water, you're out of food. Nice boat, though. And kind of took you in. He's a nice guy. Jim Sanchez. He is the leader of this wagon train and has led many a trek. He does a lot of business, actually, with Scotland on the outskirts, where people sell their fruit and whatnot for things that Scotland can't produce, like fine metals, gears, machine, machining in general. They can't really produce that. They don't have the craftsmen. They don't have the metal. Scotland doesn't really have a lot of mining to it either, because of most of the places just vegetation and farmland, which is the way it's supposed to be. Ooh, what was I pulling up the map? And you, after getting your feet, getting less wet behind the ears, like you said, did some larceny, some tomfoolery, some bad stuff, and got into some bad people. So it made sense you would ask somebody like Jim Sanchez for help, someone you know is a good person. And he was more than happy to help you. One thing that you always notice, no one else really picked up on until Jim noticed it too. Whenever you touch trace dust, it had a kind of greenish tint to it. Normally this black, onyx color. It was sorry more of lead than onyx, but this like blackish lead colored dust. That was grainy and just almost like glass shards. Turned green and almost malleable in your hands. Not a vibrant green, just a dull green. Something that would be overlooked by most. Even copper of you. <laughs> yes, like a copper patina. That's the best way. That's, yeah, it looks like copper patina. Jesus Christ, it's a good description of it. So that's why he's taking you to the guild and all. If they will offer you protection, they will offer you a place to stay because you are special. You've never really heard anyone call you special before. And you, that probably made you happy. Because in Scotland, everyone's just kind of equal. There's no buddy that, sure, Tim can catch fish better than me. Well, not fish. Tim can catch flies out the air with his bare hands. And I can do a backflip. But in the end, everyone just kind of lives. There's no really driving competition. Got in communists. And that's a little bit of background and push for you, so. I'll write that down when this video comes up. You can always listen to it again. Exactly. On to you, my good friend. Also, send me your character via email, please. Did you send the value already? I have, yeah. Give us me, Matt. The Isaac Newton name? Yes, Isaac Newton. Yeah, I'm Isaac Newton. I love it. Me. No man. No, no, no parents. I just kind of died. Natural causes or whatever, but. Well, the waste are cruel yeah. sometimes. Just dig in, go live. I got a trusty shovel. Go <laughs> anywhere about to look at you. I have a fun idea, man. Go for it. So, Ramit could be kind of where you call home. Your parents, long after the boom, as their ancestors before them sought out trace. So they went south towards the mountains, where it said an abundance of trace lies in them their hills. Your parents never came back. You were young, and in this small camp of few other people, you grew up mining what little bit of trace you could from the ground. 
And on your 13th birthday, something strange happened. You noticed that every time you touched traits, it had this patina to it, a slight green. You asked somebody about it. They told you that you're worth a lot of money to the right kind of people. And so you were used as a way to find trace and abundance. It's almost like a doubt being run. You felt this you feel like you could almost feel it in the ground sometimes. You made a decent living off of that. And that gave you enough money to finally go do something else. Leave this just generally kind of downtrodden place and kind of take it to the people that you were forced to let use you when you were younger because you honestly couldn't bet for yourself. And so you set out to Charlotte for the Ruby trip to put in a petition to join the guild and get your official license and all that. That's what's brought you to the caravan today. Okay, I like it. Now, Luke, my boy, Say the words. This is I'm going to be playing Human Fortune, and basically, she's growing up in nice, abandoned, not abandoned, nice, but his family was nice to him. He always got what he needed, and some things that he wanted when he was younger. And then his dad was always there in the corner. She made blades for him. People. I'm really going to offer this to you, by the way, since you are kind of a Japanophile. The Hobgoblin Society with the Stone Giants to the to the southwest is honestly it it is very it is very Japanese inspired. Hobgoblins in a lot of my settings tend to take on a lot of the Bushido code and samurai and yeah. kind of follow Shinto beliefs because I think it's cool as fuck. So that is that is something I'm offering to you, like a place if you want to be like that be kind of your homeland. I live in the hills to do that because if you say your dad is a blacksmith, that's a craftsman. The stone giants were craftsmen of a great great tier, and they, it's not like they don't allow other people there. State. It's not an ethno state, so. Is that something you'd be interested in, or? Yes. If I do that, I want to change my state. Yeah, that's fine. So I'd have to switch out some characters. That is 100% fine. Yeah. I mean, I have another character built because when you told me about that earlier. Everything. Tell you what, you, you, do, built, built, built. You, you, you do what you need to do. Uh, if you're, are you ready to like talk about it or? Yeah, I'm ready to talk. Okay, about let's it. talk. About like, it. Stuff. Okay, that's fine. So it's gonna be a little bit different then. Don't worry, we'll we'll be rolling. Yes. Yep, Dylan has to re-roll this. What the? I rolled it three times in front of you. I don't believe you. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't on camera, so the yeah, for the count, I wasn't on camera. Anyway, like, really? Anyways, um, <laughs> we, we all like dice. Set everyone the map, by the way. Actually, we don't have a dice. Did you take it home, Len? No, I didn't take it home, Len. No, you're tripping balls right now. I'm not so, playing about the dice trick. I don't want to work on the fucking holy shit. So, I have a lot of money. Finally, someone playing a hobgoblin. They're my favorite race in all the 5e that has ever been put out. I love hobgoblins. I had two characters and mine's and I forgot you said that. Alright, Luke, lay it on me. Talk about your hobgoblin. So he was born and raised in the drawing blank city, you said. Uh, well, it's a country I stated. Okay. So, Ilwan would be the country. Yeah. Now, you would have been born and raised there on a little outskirts and everything, more of a, a town side that stayed more towards traditionalism, and his family stayed a little bit further away from the center of town. Well, what I'm, what I'm asking, so when you say traditionalism, the hobgoblins that lead the bugbears and other goblinoids in this kind of peacekeeping effort 
like I said, kind of follow a Shin, like a like a Shinto kind of like yep. Ushino code, like that kind of belief. Whereas the Stone Giants more so have a respect for the land and what comes from it and that sort of thing. So, would you be following more of like which one are you? It would be a little bit more of the um, Shinto side, though. Okay. Okay. And that and everything. Um, but yeah, they lived in a nice little house on the outskirts of town, large enough for his dad to have a forge and everything, and everyone in town seemed to prefer his blades over a lot of the other people's blades because he had that a unique touch to it that always gave it that little spark of like this was a blade that was crafted with enough love for the, for the art rather than for the love of war like so the the stone giants in view not the, the as they kind of do things the stone and the ore and give it a soul from nature mm-hmm. When you're saying the traditional list of beliefs and stuff like that, the blades forged by your family are forged in the more traditional method that were done before the fall down to the roots of the of the world tree. Yeah. And you guys imbue a different kind of blade. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. That is that works. That's actually pretty red. Yeah, he he, he uses that it and he always wanted to learn that and wanted to do that so ever since he was young and dad would set him on a forge on the forge side as he forged the blade and taught him from a young age and how to do that and then his mom would come in and tell him to not do that so much because she wants him to be able to make his own choices even though he made that choice himself at a young age but these are interesting i love these things so it's like the trip of the mom being like, you don't have to follow in your father's footsteps. Yeah. Mom, I really enjoy this. Yeah. No. No, you're just don't. saying that. And his younger brother took more towards what his mom was. And his mom was more of a, um, just lost the word. More of a crafter with basket weaving and house, not per se, but more of Artsy and stuff. I, I understand yeah. what you're getting at. More artsy and crafty and stuff. More of like, more like uh, cloth works yes. and weavers' tools and stuff like that. A craftsy kind of artsy person that would sell things out of that vein versus just forging and stuff like that. I get what you're going for there. And then his grandfather also lived with them until he passed away, and him. He and his grandpa were always really close, because, and it was his grandpa on his dad's side. They were all really close together, and always you can never separate the three of them. You get them all three in the, like a nice room with the blade forge and everything. They'd be gone for hours once he turned sixteen. Okay. And stuff. They'd be gone for hours, telling each other, "Hey, what if we did this? What if we did that?" And stuff. But his grandpa was always under the impression of. These blades only use it when you have to. You never, you never really have to use it, but if you needed to, that's when you used it. That is the code the goblinoids in my the setting use, so that just fits. A good way to explain it is Grandpa was more of an Uncle Ivor. No, I, I, I like I said, that is the ideology that they have, so that's super cool. So yeah, he ended up picking up more of that mentality. He always see creatures that are. Like little, I don't know if they'd be considering her universe, but like little bunny things or little small little mammals and everything that'd be hurt and you bring back to the house and bring back to hell. Yeah, you, you, you don't have to like specify animals, yeah. but I get what you're saying. And there was one company specifically that he's done where he forged like a little bit of like a prosthetic leg for an animal. It wasn't even to be used too much of the leg, but to help him get along. And he kind of like tried his best to make a little spin leg, new leg for it and stuff. Just to show him like, this animal can still live, it doesn't need to die when his younger brother's like, no, it's wounded, go, go kill it. It's like, no, it's got so much life left in it. Okay. And stuff like that. So yeah. So, you, do you have any real way why you'd be on the caravan toward the Ruby Trail to join the guild? 
I'd like to say that his dad, with his dad, his dad didn't like to put little bits of trace. Not enough to like, um... A decoration of like... Yeah, like a decoration of a fine little sprinkling of like, um, socks and blades and stuff. I'm not blacksmithing. Yeah. That's, that's a fun he, thing he like to do. He likes to do that and everything. And he could do, he could put little sparks of, uh, magic into the blades and everything by using it. Some of the blade gave off a warm sensation when you got near them. Like yeah. a nice welcoming thing. Magic like that. And stuff like that. And, yeah. But why are you... Um, so, one day, I'm like, I want to help you out, and I want to do something like that. And, like you described to these guys, I went to go, like, grab some of the dust for him that he had, and it kind of, like, melted in my hand. Everything after I turned like 16. So you're on a journey to find yourself then, in a way. Yeah, on a journey of like, okay, this happened, and he kind of explained to me God, what this means. And I'm like, okay, let's go see what we can do with this. Huh. Okay, so you're trying to use it to improve your craft, and this use is a good it. place to start. Use it to see if I can use it to improve my craft, bring it back to my dad, show him some new stuff. I like Anything it. Like that. That's fun. Cool, cool. <laughs> All right. Don't forget the thing the characters be. You know, by the way, just a little bit ago. Disregard the characters. I got you. All right. Give it to me. Hello. Oh. No, oh, I, I was saying give it to me as in like Connor right now. Give I'm a me. bartender. Slash artificer. Well, I, I kind of already know, but we're going to flush it out even more. So yeah, I want start to... from the top. I am an artificer that bartends. I like it. Thanks, Tom. So, I like that book. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what to look for me. So, Connor has. He bartends. And I'm and an artificer. But I also bartend. He's a bartender. He's a bartender. All right, so where do you like? I am a are you, you're a kobold. That's what I was gonna ask. Are you I, from Scopoline or are you from outside of that? Are you part of the Nine Palace? What would make more sense in the world? I, Honestly, either or works. Okay, I want to come from the place of Scalies. All right, so you're from Scopoline. Okay. Now, are you still within that five to sixteen year rump spring, or are you long? Are you past that? Mm-hmm. So am I not allowed to come back if I don't come here? Past sixteen years, you are not allowed back within the territory of Scotland. So, so if I come back, is it like Rumspring to where I just can't leave again? You would not be able to leave again. <laughs> okay. So obviously, I'm past that. I can't go home because the calling. Okay. Are we not? Are we starting not in Scotland, right? Yeah, no, you got to go. Yeah, so yeah, I made my I made my leave. Wait, you said I got sixteen years, right? Yeah. To do it? Between so when you turn five and then you have a window until you're six you have from five, you're allowed to leave, like five years old. And then until you can't return if you're older than sixteen. Uh that's some BS. Okay. Yeah, no, I definitely am out of skedaddy, like I went on Rome Spring and I never came back because I wanted to make my doodle in 28. Okay, so do you want to talk about any family you had or anything if that uh, pertains? It's kind of weird. What? I'm gonna kick it. You can leave at five. That's a serious thing, Matt. That's different from Bailey's. Different races age different ways. Yeah. Right. Lender Soul, for instance, age exponentially faster and mature than a Dragonborn does. A Dragonborn, when they're about 14, they would probably go on their Rome Spring. Whereas a lizard folk is going to leave when they're like six. What about kobolds? Kobolds? It's around the same ballpark. Uh, Usually around like six, seven, eight, they would probably go up to. 
Right. I'm just sitting here thinking about it from a human perspective. It's like, that's just funny. Yeah. Not everyone's human. Here, just in the thing. Oh, that's okay. very few people are human. Two weapon fighting is the dual weapon fighting style. Oh, uh, I thought so. They couldn't. Let me see here. So I wanted to talk to you about. So I up and left, right? Was I in the you guild were. after I left? Like you said, we're calling to join the guild, right? You were going to join the guild right now. Excuse me. Okay, we're joining right now. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so with, with my with my bar. See, this is fucked up. Why would a kid on a bar? It is poking well, so many holes in the like, not leaving. poking holes. You could be way older. Can I, uh, so you're talking about coming back down the here. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, like, okay. That, you can't work. go back to Scotland after, you, after but, 16. So I knew I wanted to take this adventure. I wanted to join this guild. It seemed intriguing. So I decided to up and sell my bar. Okay. Now, my question is... Is there any possibility I can get my traveling tiny bar, like instead of tiny hut, pimp it out to be a tiny bar? No, yeah, that's completely fine. But that's kind of irrelevant of what we're talking about right now. No, it is irrelevant. You you're also an artist, so you can just build a trailer. That's a lot to load, man. Not if you never unload it. It just is a building that moves. Yeah, but... Uh, I'll, you're level one. Oh, I forgot. I could have like a buggy and a fucking trailer. Yeah. yeah. It's a steampunk little buggy. Steam power. No. Holy shit. You could have yeah. a steampunk yeah. power. You got just a car. Car. bar on wheels. He's just got an RV. Yeah, you can have like. Because your background it like makes sense for you to have. Like, I'm fine with that. Okay, okay, okay. You're an artificer. You want to run a bar that travels, I, yeah, that's completely you know, fine. You have a food truck of alcohol. Okay, okay, You're okay. the mobile let bar. Me, hold on, let me... I like how this is just now right. clicking. You're like, oh. oh! I'm not used to it. I'm sorry. I'm not used to pistols and cars. Steampunk. Said so many times. Steampunk was the man. I keep reiterating it. I love yeah, it. I right. love it. All right. So I got, I've got my traveling bar, um, it cut ties with my land. Now does your, now, family-wise and stuff, is it just very similar to Mackie's where there's a, yeah, go do what you want, we're happy, you're happy. My family was supportive, my wife was not. Ended in divorce. Do you have kids? One. How old is he, Connor? Getting ready to go experience the world. You might seek you out. No. That really just covers that. What? Now, why are you going to join? What? In like, the world once, and I've been waiting for a, an itch to get back out there. I just haven't scratched anything. Then this opportunity came to me. Some way, somehow, somewhat, somebody told me about me being. So right before you turned sixteen, you're like, I gotta fucking go do this. I don't, I don't want to be here. What? No, no, no. I'm twenty eight. Remember? Yeah, I'm saying like, you left Scotland. It would happen before you're sixteen. But right after sixteen, you said I can come back with Rumspringer, so I come back after Rumspringer. You can. Okay. My, and I do my like I start my business. You try to look for me. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, I get it. And then I'm just and like, you know what? You're done. I I have to go out to. The, why can't I not go outside? Like I get, life. I get it. Okay. okay. Now I follow. Now, but you just can't come yeah. back. Here. Yeah, I can't come back now. So I'm older now. I have I started a family, and I was like, you know what? This life ain't for me. I'm in my mid He's getting he's getting ready to be with Rumspringer. I want to experience this with my child, and she's. Do you just want like, me to come with you? She's just like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> But it's pretty cool. Should I be your son? Do you want to be my son? No, I don't. No, I feel like you want him to come with you, though. Like, I'm actually kind of done. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to run this idea out anyway. Okay. So she wasn't for it, oh. but he was getting that age. And he's heard all the stories I told about the things that I did mm -hmm. while on Rome Springer. All right. And it's been an interest of it. It's been a patch. And he's been waiting to come of age to go travel. And 
he, me and him are on the same page of he's just kind of like, I kind of want you to go with me and experience the world with me and show me these things. And I'm just like, my boy, if I leave, I can't, I cannot return. And then it's just like, but I'm with my boy. I get my wife and my boy on the road. I could, I could move my business. I made me, I made me these. But your wife didn't want to fucking go. But my wife was against it. She said, I love my land. And I said, so do I. I so do I. But I love the other lands too. <laughs> and she, she had very boomer views. And I had very radical views. It didn't work anymore. So we split ways. All right. It was a very decent divorce. I mean, it was heartbreaking on both ends, you know, and... Our boy took it better than I figured he would, as he understood that I wanted to be with him and go travel the world with him, and he was like, Mom, why would you not come with? Okay. So, is your son with you right now, or no? Or did he choose to stay with Mom for at least a bit? Oh, he's learning how to bartend on the way. How old is he? What? So, he, he said leaving would be at five. Yeah, he can leave. So, at seven, because I wanted to scrape him out enough tracer and enough items to craft us the moving bar before we now, left. Your son does not have the same interaction with Tracer that you do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. He's a he's side quest character. He's a side quest character. He's just. Fatalities. Cool. That's a great backstory. Now, okay. you have a food truck. I have a food truck. Uh -huh. Now, I already had like something typed out for being a tiny hut, but this is way too big to like tiny huts twenty by twenty. Yeah, it's way too big to be like a trailer. So, I'm thinking of like having basically the so so. Describe it wise, description wise, drawing wise, it's gonna be rough, but it's very basic. So it's like, it's like, let's see if I have 15. So I will tell you, I'm not that worried about, but it's for these, the logistics of it, I'll be honest. I am. It's one of those things I assume you have enough space for a table. For people like one group of people to come play and maybe play cards, you have where you store the alcohol and like a small bar for someone of your size, not so much someone normal size. So I was thinking something like this so, like the driving area and like the bar area is up front, and then the back's more like a flatbed ish kind of thing with maybe like a top or something to keep people out of the heat. Like, uh, you know those safari vans that, like, you have, like, basically rolled out of the Just like the side. So, yeah, you can drink so, down the side. Where you would sit for the steering wheel and everything, the bar is, like, what would normally be the wall separating the flatbed, but instead you convert that to a bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 100% could picture what and, you're saying. And that's, you have, like, that's like awesome. when you close the drive, you can close and seal that up so, like, Sam's not kicking that's into awesome. the stuff. Yeah, that's cool as fuck. And, and this, like, people can sit out in the bar and you got the one power table. Power. How is it powered, you ask? I want to know. That's exciting. That, you're an artificer. Tell me how it works. All right. So, you guys have a fucking vehicle right from the start. Like, this is cool. Everybody just got to hold on to the back. <laughs> Traveling in the back is like rough. How's the power? Tell okay, you? so, power wise. I'm so here. Thought you weren't into the mechanics of it, huh? Just, okay. You know, just tell so, me the like super basic like how does it how is it sound? So while experimenting with the brew, I made a concoction that is not edible or not drinkable, makes you very ill. But it has been very potent for some of my some of my machines, and is a it is a nice power brew. You invented ethanol. And, and ethanol people. That's what I was about to say. The dude invented ethanol. And <laughs> you this, this vehicle runs off of the burning of the fumes. 
Wow, it's my car went seat up really makes me drop the next my car. So, so, so sometimes yeah. to make it, make it like add on. So it's basically like a dump bucket. So if it's not over drinks, I dump it in that and it kind of like mixes with it, it to help it burn. Ethanol. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> You're just like, yeah, I got a brewing beer. And it, it was, I couldn't drink it. It was, it was like borderline poisonous, but yeah, <laughs> god damn. <laughs> it's really combustible. <laughs> Shit works. It, it works in the cheese. Uh, <laughs> wow. All, all these Americans here yeah. kill me for it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that. That's, okay, that's, that's the fun shit I was looking forward to. Yes. And now I also want to add the little flavor on the chairs. So the chairs are bolted in, but there's a little like rails to where you can slide it back. Oh, that's fun. So if you want to sit close, you can. If you want to sit back, you can. So they're, it's... they're stationary where they're at. Like you can pair them there out and slide in. The, right. ch yeah. the, ch the only table is solid and in. Table yeah. doesn't move. Bar doesn't move. Only the chairs do. So you can pull it out, then slide it and sit up, and you can kind of choose your distance. I like that. That's awesome. So if they're like a bigger creature, they can slide back, and like a large creature can sit and be like punched. But small creature can be like, hey guys. All of your backstories are great, and they really integrate you into the world. So this time around, this is gold. This is just as good as last game, like backstory wise. This is gold. We have fucked up last game. Oh, you guys had a great backstory last game. <laughs> oh. All right, I love that it's powered by ethanol. I love everything about it, Connor. Any final notes you want to say about it? But like about you? Um, I'll add a few notes with my kids just so you have like a basis for them. Yep. You can just text them to me or whatever in the group chat or. Oh, okay. Whatever. It's gonna be brief. Oh, then just tell me I can. Remember. Just like childlike wonder with the new world. Oh yeah. With, with the mix of like being like interested in like the mechanical shit that i do yeah he's... basically he's like dad how does that work and i'm just like honestly it's a lack that it's on but that's actually that i will no. describe how to make it you look another thing to add on you learn these mechanics outside of something yeah that's why you were so drawn to even leave again is because you brought these back and people like them as a novelty integrated it and in. people are like oh this is cool a water wheel that makes things move i'm gonna go pick my fruit now thanks and no one truly appreciated your genius and when i'm done he liked it all he loved all of it it didn't matter what i made man so yeah i, I like that okay. because in scopoli remember it's a very natural place not a lot of technology exists yeah no theme necessity and I'm back here just like, yo, dude, I can tank it. Exactly. The fact that scale. you started, like, brewing alcohol that wasn't just, like, just, like, aged and distilled wine was, like, insanely, sh like, strange but enjoyable to most of the people that live there. Mm -hmm. Beyond, beyond, like, no one's really had a hard spirit before. Yep. The only thing I left in my life. That no one that was, a, like, a native really did, besides that they left or not. The only thing I left my wife is the recipes for some of the brews so that she can still make a living here. It's all trade and barter, so... And even if you, there's no real homelessness or bad off either, no one starves to death because there's yeah. a fruit tree that you can go eat off of if you need. Also, most of most the one fruit tree? Not just multiple, like it's just like a series of fruits. Another thing, one another thing on one point that I didn't mention that I'm going to mention now, most people grow up on almost a strictly vegetarian diet. Very rarely is meat ever eaten there. So the fact you probably got a taste fit on your rum springer and that probably blew your mind. In a lot of ways, it's like my stomach. That too. Shit for weeks. Don't project me. Well, I wasn't projectile shitting on it. <laughs> anyway. Now, Dylan. Yes. Let's talk. Talk to me. What do I talk about? Suck you. <laughs> you don't get to play now. All right, I'll go home. So, I am playing something that I came up with on the mower just as soon as you said steampunk. And this is a. He is a necrofisser, which I've been wanting to play ever since we found it. Necrofisser, got it. And he is also 
and Warforged, which is fantastic. But I, I just love that concept of it. And he was made by a lich to house his philosophy, and that's what powers him. You were so now, close. I phylacterate. Phylacterate. He's made by a lich. What did he say? Phylacterate? Phylacterate. Phylacterate? Phylacterate. Okay. Yeah. You were close. I know. You were like, so. anyway. I know. I can't pronounce it. It's not my fault. Continue, honey bunches. Anyways, so. He doesn't know too much about where he was from, or what he's doing, or where he's going. All he knows is that bringing the dead back was basically and literally hardwired into him. So he kind of got a knack for that, and that's how he became a necrophyser, was for somehow he was able to just start, instead of using magic to bring things back from the dead, he was able to harvest the last embers of the souls and sew them back into things. And after a while of doing that, back where they were from, which I assumed was probably after we, I heard you say it, was um, what was that if called? You, um, if Al you're, if Al you're, I think so that's If you're playing a Warforge, Because you said that's where the spirits and mecha mechanized men came from. Yeah, who owns them? A long time. Yeah, that's how it was. Um, I just spoke. Instead of that. being like used to house religious phylactery and stuff, I'm fine with like the whole like bring people back from the dead stuff that being like something you're hardwired with. Mm -hmm. But the lich, lich's phylactery thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'd be weird to work in. Well, we can talk about that at some time. If you need to think about reworking that. Well, the Wantum thing, you would be a mechanized man with a soul for some reason. Right. Mm hmm. Warforge, now, after you got left in the blowing waste outside of the mountain, like, what did you do? Well, he just walked around for a little bit, crafted a couple things, and after that, he didn't really know what to do. And he ended up stumbling upon some random traveling merchant, hung out with him for a while, Freaked him out. Mechanized man that's bringing things back from the dead that they find on the street just because he can and he wants to show him. He doesn't know how people work. And so he's kind of been just tossed aside from this person to that person, traveling merchant style. And after a while, he said, you know what? Fuck it. And he heard about the guild and everything like that. And he said, you know what? There's some people that might accept me. Okay. So he built himself a box. Okay. In town. Yep. He labeled it for exactly where it needed to go. <laughs> and he closed the door. Oh my God, you're being shipped on this wagon train. Do I fucking love that? That's awesome. Well, when you said lich, you said you don't prevent the lich. My original thing was the lich is shipping me there. The lich, it wants to keep its flat pretty safe. <laughs> so I figured the guild could protect it me and I could get in with them. So he just. You know what, Dylan? Put me in a box. Instead of going from like traveling merchant to traveling merchant, you just haven't been outside of this box. It's fine by me too. You just haven't been outside of this box. You know, you have like memories of doing this in the past. And right. Stuff. Like this is all going to come naturally to you, whatever. In fact, you have a lot of memories about this land in general. But you, uh, no, you also never been outside of this box. Mm -hmm. It's been a few hundred days. Maybe someone will open it soon. 
Uh, you know you're supposed to stay in the box until it opens. That's what I'm gonna leave you off on. There's one. Oh god, is there any specific sheet one about the character? Background lights. Um, other than that, no, not really. Okay. Um, the only question, two questions I have yeah, is, I could this have been put in the box with me? What is it? It's a tiny, um, construct. Um, from looking it over, it's basically a tiny fly. It's got a bite and a telepathic bond with me, so it can perceive, like, outside the box if I wanted to look out. Can just crawl through a hole. Sure. So I can see out of it. Sure, I'm done with that. And then um, the last creature, oh shit, I haven't. Yeah. Anyways, the last creature I created was a shadow. I'm gonna let this fly out. You probably just explain what it is from the compendium. And then the blood just crawls out. I don't. He's got like root chest. I don't know. Like you can't do creatures like Um, it's not going to be hard. So that is in the box with me. That was 100%. Now, yeah. anybody on the screen? They have no idea what's in this box. Little lightning bug with a light bulb on the back. But randomly, like, completely inert. I am just yeah, hanging out. Every time. But it's the different. shadow randomly makes loud noises, scratches at the box because it wants the fuck out of here. Wants the fuck box and scaring everybody. <laughs> Jim Sanchez being the hard man to get in, refuse to disobey the, the shipping information. Oh shit, he's about to commit a federal crime. <laughs> he's he's mad. Mad. he refuses. Don't you like that? Isn't you know that? A great backstory. I'm very happy with it. <laughs> it's the most basic and easiest thing I've ever All right. gotten. All right, Sammy. But it's fantastic. Lay it on me. All right. Lucille Pierce, human artificer. A question that she, she's been asked when she, ever since she was young. Who do you want to be? What do you want to be when you grow up? She had no answer to that. Or... She couldn't quite make up her mind. Okay. Yes. So, she would just try, uh, like, all, like, what anything that would pique her interest. Okay. But after she was growing up, right. she realized she wanted to be everything. She wanted to have, be, have multiple, like, you know, talents, multiple, like, um, I think just take multiple skills, beat everything all I want. Okay. So. I can't have to see two characters. Oh, it should be Discord. Oh, you just have to be Discord. Yeah. The only thing I don't have is the bullets, so I don't know how many bullets I'm allowed to start with. Alright, I just got two guns, bullets. Not only because she wants to, because, but also because she wants to repay her stepsister, who practically raised her into like you know so yeah. you're looking to be successful yes mm -hmm. that's like the gist of it yes like okay. she wants to try everything she wants to um uh, be like like skilled in it like be a jack of all trades basically no it's like the main goal here to be successful get the money get the bitches and make your family proud is that the main goal here kind of yeah Okay, so I'm trying to get like a sense of the personality. So you said your stepsister raised you. Yes. Kind of a la let, let's elaborate on that a little bit. All right, so um, basically, my mom and my dad, they, um, my mother died when I was a very young age. My father remarried because my stepmom, but they both disappeared, leaving my oldest stepsister to raise not only me, but when not only me, but when um, I got older, um, my niece and my nephew. So there's just this single, like single, like stepsister, but also a mom raising two. <laughs> Two um, kids, you know, 
class or anything. Sorry, I'm not talking so much. It's like talking. Sorry. I'm listening, so anyway. Why? And I can be the reaction. So, like, if it's just, it's just like my stepsister raising me, yeah, you know, uh, she. Luckily, we have soft. Now, bigger city, soft, smaller and... town. Smaller. What? Is, what was the profession? Uh, she was a seamstress. Okay. Now, any particular, like, wants to be from a particular place, or? Because if you're from Charlotte, that'd make the most sense. I was going to say, Charlotte sounds like a good place to start. Okay. Um, since, you know, you said humans are just basically, like, how fellows or anything. Like, there aren't a lot of people that are doing that. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, that would work if I was for sure. Okay. Um, so, um, sorry, I'm thinking. Basically, not only did she want to like, uh, work around the you know, seizures, um, my sister had like at least enough money to get me like a like uh, enough money to pay a uh, um, a teacher to teach me a little bit like you know like, like to write and to um, basically like, do like um, like skills you know like like um, if I could speak you know. Um, that, uh, um, um, this teacher really helped, um, helped her, um, um, a lot, you know, grow, like, like her curiosity, and, you know, um, uh, wanting to not only explore, like, explore, like, you know, like, different, like, you know, like, fast knowledge, but, like, skills, and, but also the world, you know? I'm sorry I suck compared to all these guys. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Good, good. Sammy, you, you're just repeating yourself a lot. Like, it, it, with what you're saying. I get your character's motivation. They want to explore, learn, better themselves, so they can then return to their family and better them and the community around them. And, like, you want to pay back the people that helped you be able to kind of go pursue this mm -hmm. as a vein. I get that. Mm -hmm. And I know round about where you're from, be a smaller town. It would be some people that probably weren't the most educated, but they felt like they were undereducated either. Your parents skipped out on you guys from a young age. After remarrying, who knows what they went and did? You might find out eventually. And have a special affinity towards the trace, so that's probably why you're going to be guild in the first place. There you go, Sammy. Because you kept spinning your wheels. Not every backstory has to be complicated or tragic. Yes. Mackie's been pretty simple, too. <laughs> so, yeah. I have everyone's backstories. I'm just waiting on what looks like, I think, two characters. I got Indio, Isaac Newton, Real Rogues Gallery, Arlo, who's Arlo? Red and Lucille so far. I want to send you more information about like my brother and so my grandson. Uh, yeah, just post up things in Discord if you're going to do that. I would prefer to have those in Discord for Snake. Now, we are going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and actually start session one. So, we'll be right back after these commercial breaks. Look at the right files. Now I gotta search through all my images. Take a screenshot of the picture. 
Salutations. We are out for the night. This has been a wonderful time. How are you guys here? Simple. It's been a good match. I have been waiting for three and a half hours. hours. Three and a half hours. It's been nuts. It's been a wild ride. I almost have to go home. Yeah, I know. It took like an hour and a half to suss out his inventory. We can avoid all this. We can avoid all this. Why are you playing with them? Yeah. Why not force me to do something new? I didn't and force you to do anything. If only he didn't make him play a good character. I didn't no, force you to play guy. everything. What the fuck? He's he looks gorgeous. You're like, oh, you're forcing me to play Artificer. You made that decision. This character was pretty made. You know what? What's it? I really like that pistol, too. Hey, one new black and white. Old school style. Cannon blaster. Stop cannon blaster. You're gonna get a little set in my fist. Cobalt fist, though. Fist of the Cobalt Star. Fist of the Cobalt. Some app. Like first of all, it's always etched with like fingers into it, so it looks like a fist. And I have it pop out with regular one. It takes a lot to carve it. Make your son do it. Right. This yeah. bitch work. So you are all on a wagon train, <laughs> heading across Charland. Am I driving next to the train? I said wagon train, Connor. What's that mean? We're in a straight line. You know how you have a vehicle? So a trail. It's like a funeral brigade. No, it's mm -hmm. literally people traveling together. Oh, so it's like little house on the prairie shit. A wagon train. Wow. Play it for the people that don't look up history. I think, history I think everyone else knows what a wagon train is. I, I figured it out. Nah. I used context clues. Thanks. <laughs> Did I said there was no trains. There, there is no. There aren't. <laughs> trains do not exist. Uh, we have a train, train referred to a steam locomotive. Train meant other things. Yes. yes. It is. <laughs> not a good. For sure. Somebody at the door. No, no that's the other one. It sounded like it came from over there. It has been almost 50 days on this black and train. Been all days waiting for the game to start. For you, it's been three weeks. Um, you guys have relatively gotten to know each other as if you, I assume, as it's not a big black and train. Probably about maybe 30 people. There was 40, but some people got off the last stop. You guys are heading towards Ruby Trail. And you just came upon the outskirts of the giant petrified force that you're going to be traveling through. And for the night, since it is not good to travel in the forest at night, and the sun is getting low, camp is decidedly set up. Big latrine. You begin digging a latrine in the soft, almost dusty soil. Don't pass by any big latrine. Hang on, shit. I have, I have actually got questions here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> and uh, I'll go and prepare dinner, I suppose, for myself. So, Bacon, whatever meat is available, or flour, what have you, or whatever analog there are thereof. And probably beans. Probably many, many beans. Um, so there are lots of bean stuffs and a few desert greens. There is 
leftover meat from a large beetle. Probably like a large dung beetle or something. It was exceedingly large, probably like 10 foot. That was found dead already that people have kind of butchered up. So there has been a nice additive of meat to most of the stew past week or so. Good, good. So it's just packed to we'll keep for a long time. Um, you guys, now, as part of the wagon train, people do feed each other like it is not uncommon, obviously. And you guys don't have to eat alone at all. People are more than willing to kind of collectively just hang out in this place. By the way, what season are we starting in? The first of clear to make it simple. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'll take my little pewter bowl and I'll go sit up against the wagon and I will eat. Where am I located on these wagons? Ah, oh, you are actually in. Am I in the front? Does everyone get trying to open the crate? Smack it a couple times. You are in Jim's cart up front, the lead cart. Fantastic. Does anybody sit near it? I'm gonna go try and get this other voice. No, most people are congregating more for the middle of the wagon train. Okay, I wasn't sure. Uh, fire, fire is lit, people are talking, passing stories. <laughs> A little bit of water. I'm just gonna have my little, uh, I sit with the group. My little bug. Chill out where all the people are so I can hear the stories at least. <laughs> Started digging a hole straight down. Sit down and enjoy the story. That's a lot of stories. Yes. <clears throat> you a long sip and drink. Now, so those of you recognize this, all of you, probably. Now we're kind of fine. I'll practice this in a while. Power to fuck. What words do you be said in this room? No, this is how. Now, this is an old story from all of There's a spring that she had never dreamed from on the outskirts, just near the bit that connects to Ramik. And it has a reason for not because it's bad water, like in the ocean. It's evil water. It used to be that if you drink out of it, go side of one of those yonder reasons. He just points off in a random direction. No mountain over there, but he's pointing off to the distant parts of uh, the world. But whatever, wherever you're from, the one that has the mountains for it. Yep, just vaguely so. Well, if you pass the horse, most step to the rips you apart. You get your corpse bones and all, nothing left but a pile of gear, clothes. I hear that pool was filled with sand by grieving with them, but you never can trust a story, can you? Takes another drink. Lights up. And refines and waits for someone else to tell the story. Um, so, there's been a bunch of stories been passed around my family. Great scared to hear them. So, my grandfather, he is known in our village as the Fire Lord. He. So, keep going, Luke. Keep going, don't look at me. I'm going to take a long swig. <laughs> I, I, I forgot the name. Oh, that. No, no. <laughs> you know, it's a quiet drink and give the mom this group. Drink every time. Uh, we drink every time LeBron mentions no, fire. I think it's flame. The fire water is so. I know a lot. It's in your trap, so I'm going to go back in the middle of the night. No, no, what? My grandfather got the nickname Kongu the Flame Lord from his time as a warrior. Many stories beyond that. He 
How do you learn things and how to control flames from ancient beings made of fire? And it was really interesting to go and learn some of those stories. Uh, one time he said he sat down and just started a conversation and ended up challenging him to a duel. Didn't win the duel. It's man made of fire versus hobgoblin. Not, not really a fair fight. But still did. And everything was. One was more of a boring story. Interesting the one he says. And he explained this a little bit more interesting. He uses more flair with it. So what do you lose then? He, he lost, he basically just lost his, ah, I just lost his bad again. He lost his, his for the night, basically. So he had to sleep outside rather than having to sleep inside. Excuse me. Was the scorch scene. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Why why look so red? <laughs> well, I'm scared to talk about it. It's so scared to talk about it. I like it's easier not to get sunburned. Like, hmm. Yeah. Huh. Um, That's lucky. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've burnt once in my life now. That would be this dude is still like unwrapping his like arms and like the wrappings around his face since you guys were walking through open desert earlier. Um, well, um, it's a story that was um, told down to, told down to me, but um, so there was like, far from where like, we are now a huge hill. A huge one, a, a, a thing called the, the, the is wells. The wells part of the, the part of the thing. Um, there are like wells, but they don't. Digging a hole in the ground is not netting water. Yeah, that's what. Like um, like this well that's miraculously filled with water somehow. And um, there was a boy and a girl who, uh, uh, who traveled up this hill to, uh, to <laughs> um, to get some of this water. Um, so they have uh, this bucket and takes it as they're going down this boy starts falling right down. But the girl follows suit and then they both die. You drink them in the pool. Very muffled. <laughs> Very <laughs> That's what it probably sounds like. Yeah. I'll I'll it, come out now and join the Fire with some fresh bread. Mm -hmm. I'll take it, slice it up, one hundred percent. Mm-hmm. You have to sop up some like a grease left for my meal. Like cut like a loaf, and then cut down the middle of the loaf so it's like more slices. Ah, uh, I'll still take more slices. Go for it. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Point of that story. <laughs> My, um, what I took from it was just don't trust magical things, like, like the magical wells, I'm guessing, like, just, like, of water. I don't know, like, it's magic. I mean, you really shouldn't trust anybody who runs a water farm. Like, I understand that. Right. The water farm. Sounds to me like you should be careful with your water. Right. 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 Right
from what I heard. Families get stuck in debt, never able to leave. Great at least stuff. Could manage their money properly they could. But it's designed so you can't escape. I don't know who designed mine, they weren't very good at it. It's a place, why they should just walk away. Yeah. I mean probably do, but I don't know, maybe they sent people after you. Never really had to deal with this. Yeah, they do. You break in the law, you owe money. People are also paid to hunt you down as a bounty put out. Makes sense. Eventually, you'd be brought in dead or alive for 400 dust. It's a lot to pay for just a few people to skip out. It's probably about, I, I think it's more about the message. Makes sense. Give it a few times and people are too scared to leave. Still want to know from the box at the front. What box? The large box. The one that keeps here. We keep it scratching from inside of. Did you more let anybody look in? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Didn't see all its reasons. So it'll be fine. There are no holes in the box. I don't know how if anything's alive in there. Is it stayed left alive this long? Also, personally, I think it's probably like a zombie type thing. Lots of them in the way, so wouldn't surprise me. What someone had to be a fetish. But my piece of mind is just stayed shut. Clear out my door, though. Yeah, it's probably better to tell you. That's right, tell me, man. You're which, look, I'm trying to compare it to what you fancy. Like, we're trying to be like a zombie and we're still fresh. Like, would you? <laughs> no, no. What kind of question is that? <laughs> Try to have a conversation. Are you okay? If it's, if it's happened to you before? No. That's why I thought it was a good hypothetical. I'm very personal. Person, how about this? If a person who didn't like this turn to a zombie, would you put a bullet in the bed anyway because they're dead already? No, I don't put that in. So yeah, you gotta chop them. If you chop the head off, you can't really do anything about it. But a bullet doesn't do much. If you put it in the head, it should kill it too, right? Where I don't know. There's this one zombie. I remember. I think it would have been four or five weeks ago. Remember this one guy, this one zombie, he just kept shambling. And no arms, no legs, they just kicking for like an hour. As soon as you cut off the head, it just stopped moving. So we, I think that's how zombies work. <laughs> Garmel at this point produces gun, produces tanker stool, and he will begin cleaning his weapon. It's been some time since he did this. May as well get to it now. So where are y'all going after the delivery? Which delivery? That's where we're going. The Ruby. We're dropping some stuff off, and we're gonna leave with more cargo and go back out. Oh, so, y'all! I just jumped just... on the train. I was wondering why you was going and where you was going. I think it was a good deal. Uh, me too, actually. Well, be careful. There's some weirdos who, when they touch dust, it turns green. They tend to have a leg up on everyone else, so be on your guard. Heard some weird things about them. Wait, take what? That they can do feats of superhuman strength. They can stop monsters that no one else can deal with. I tell you, I would want to be around someone like that if they were in a bad mood. Interesting. Interesting. 
as I just run the brush through my gun a bit. Look at signs. Charlie, you two from Scotland? Yep. Yeah. Is it true that it's just like fruit covered everywhere? Yep. Maybe we'll fix it. Like good. Now look at those water bearings we were talking about. Just take what you will. Be nice. I always wonder why other people can't get in there. They'd like to. Like, why? What, what happens if you try to get in there? I've talked to some other people from Scotland and myself. I hear that if you spend so long out here without trace, and you go in there, explode. Or, you know, turn to a dragon, or two. That's just a rumor, though. One of the two? It's like two very different things. Do you, like, explode into a dragon? Nobody really knows what happens. It's never, nobody's gotten in before unless they're invited. Cool, he's joshing you. I don't know what the truth is. I'm just telling a story. That's why we're here, aren't we? <laughs> That's the best thing to find the best for. Right, but someone took the to tell me the story of a friend of his that walked in there and all he heard once he walked in was him screaming. <laughs> like he was screaming? Or... No, my friend, his friend, he started just screaming and laughing hysterically. Huh? Yeah. Your grandpa's been a lot of places. He, when he was the younger, he traveled all over the place. He was a very good warrior and very peaceful man. Never raised a blade unless he had to. He always tried to find a reason not to do it. He once taught a man how to wield a blade properly when he had it to his neck. He just simply backed away and his arm and said, no, if you want to do this, you got to do it this way. And then proceeded to show him and he said he just talked about his life. Sat down at a cup of tea and just said, hey man, this is where you need to go. And then send him on his way. Well, I hope if anyone ever comes from my life, it's your grandpa. It'd be nice. He doesn't, man, he's, he sounds retired from that life. He makes yourself a shoot at you. And they're like, and, and you turn around and pull your gun, and they're like, no, no, straighten your shoulders. <laughs> That'd be a sight. Wouldn't be a sight. Yeah, he, he's a nice man. Always nice to be around. He's a nice crap to be Most you folk are. Yeah, he helped me actually make my first blade and kill my blade. Now, the cool thing about this blade is my uh, grandpa used a little bit of uh, the dust and he sprinkled it throughout here. And as you can see, let me just draw it. It gives off this orange glow to it. I mean, it looks like a kind of a waste of money to me, but it, it, it's cool. Don't bring me to the kid. It's a nice blade. It's very nice. I mean, a lot of it. I hope so. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to use trace dust? Why not use it in the sword if you want? He's going to help stabilize it and make it so it doesn't get dull as quickly, as well as do these cool effects. Well, you're not even allowed to use trace dust. No, we can use it anyways. Don't trade for it, well, just pick it up. You don't, you don't have money? Yep. That's, that, I have a hard time wrapping my head around that one. Rusty Wolves just go. Well, it's to each their own. It's to work on the love right We do things all the time that don't require money. Wait, what? What? Thank you for following. This is the whole vibe. <laughs> I like to think of the whole vibe since we're in the desert. It's a whole scene. I'm working on it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Come on. 
Your character is gonna find this type of treasure before we do. Matt, how deep is your hole? How deep is my hole? How deep do you really? I mean, but it's gonna keep digging. Kind of digging. Deeper. So I would say at about like ten foot deep, it starts to get the ground gets a little bit harder, and you start risking chance of collapse from the edges. Because it's like a very dusty, sandy soil. It's not really like start making soil. Yeah. <laughs> That will make it collapse even worse. And fine. If you're not careful. On the roll A, uh, do you have proficiency? What would this be a proficiency under? Would this be cobbler's tools? I think. I think it's cobbler's tools like shoes. No, mason. Mason. So you feel like mason's tools? Like, I just want to jump. I wouldn't even make it shut. No, I'm saying if like, you wanted a proficiency to be good at this, I'm sure oh. I think for later. Anyway. Uh, right now, like a pickaxe proficiency. I would say make a. I want you to make a general intelligence check for me, real quick. I should be okay with this. First roll. Yeah, right. First roll of the game. Is You're a guy's pack. That I mean, I get a pregnant son. Everyone's fake. I think that was great. Plus that was great. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh, with a weird, almost genius beat of engineering, you find a hard piece of rock, like a de- like an actual rock. You're like, huh? And you use that like as a weird like way to hold up part of the side as you start slowly matting it down, like patting this kind of more dense like sandy dust that's on the bottom. Start patting it around and. You kind of level it off to where you just have a nice hole to sleep in for the night if you want to go, like exceeding well, that, like a really good temperature. Well, you ever seen those videos on YouTube where guys make things with sticks? Send them to let them do it. Yes. Yeah, I just give him proficiency in miners' tools so that way he'd be proficient with the miners' pick and the shovel. I'm just trying to think of like, I might make it just a toolkit for him because if you want to keep digging, like, yeah, I feel like that's an art itself. It's going to be this thing. Yeah, I'm going to turn in for the night. Um, good to talking to y'all again. I'm uh, looking forward to arriving tomorrow through the, the forest. You, y'all ever been through the forest? Once. Well, uh, if you see some very tall nude men and they seem to be trying to get your attention, Look to where they're trying to draw any attention to. They're trying to get us out of the forest as soon as possible. Make sure we don't get hurt or anything. The Ramaga really they just don't like us in the forest. They also uh, they, they don't stop us from traveling through, so they just try to get us in and out as soon as possible if there is like danger or something on the usual trails. Hmm. They don't try to stop anyone? No. They don't try to stop you. They don't care about your life. They just kind of want you out of the forest. And they don't want your taint to be there if you die. And it's kind of the gist I've gotten. They don't like it very much. Never really understood it. I've met plenty of Romal people, but none of them from the tribes, I guess. But they all seem nice enough. Just like you and me. All right. No. Let's see, we'll take a walk. Let's see if you have something else to do. Um, so, you are actually kind of get like this on the wagon train, so the walk is done by the people who actually run the train. It's not really you don't have to worry about it, but if you want to stay up, you can. You notice one of the people that stay behind by the fire. Probably the one gonna keep watch on this side of the train. And as everyone's drifting off to sleep, begins to play a low tune and sleep thing. Usually sit next to the fire seat. Usually sleep. And sleep comes. The fire is put out. Three minutes, three. Third, third. <laughs> and the crickets, the chirping of bugs coming from the sand around you begins to fade as well. And as soon as you sleep, the morning seems to greet your eyes. And you'll be traveling into the petrified forest. 
Any, any like preparations or anything anyone wants to make before the trek? Uh, I'm gonna sharp, sharpen my uh, sword and everything. Okay. I'll make sure my water skin is intact, so no holes have been made in it or anything. My canteen, rather. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Well, I have my cables to cover this. Bye, Sammy. Bye. Bye. Later. You sure you don't want like, me to drive you home or something? Well, you're fine. You're fine. Um, you can stick around longer if you did. I have a headache. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I don't want to ruin the movie. Okay. It's fine. I appreciate it, Sammy. Thank you. Have a good night. So, these petrified trees, they aren't small. In fact, they're bigger than our biggest trees now. They're bigger than sequoias and redwoods. In fact, they are more some of the larger ones going around a hundred foot around. So they probably towered immeasurable heights before they kind of went through the process of petrification. Now maybe they go up a few hundred feet at best. But beyond that, you don't really know much about this area. I don't really know much about any area. Yeah, no, that's... Neither do I. Yeah. I know from the stories my dad would tell me this. What have I seen on the Rob Springer? What do I know? You can make a history check if you'd like to kind of gauge any of the local lore. Can I roll a history check to see if I see heard any stories from my grandpa? Yeah. I guess I'll just keep an eye. I'll, I'll attempt to keep as much of an eye on the grass as I just saw the magnificent tree. Four. Four. None of them are home. Not really. I'll enjoy the side through. My son's eyes and my eyes. Your yes, son are familiar? Yes. Okay. Nah, just... We are both seeing the same thing, but it's different, you know. You've got that childlike wonder to it. Is your son with you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's been with me the whole time. That's just still a great picture, man. Thank you. I'm a dad. I'm, I'm gonna try and use like a ghoulish like voice <coughs> for this character, but then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna make a bad shit of some piece with impression. I don't want I don't want this so just so happy to have it. Um, he's just like that's mad shit. This is why I've got a lever action rifle as well as my pistol. Yeah, then. What the heck? What? I'm trying to. I'm trying to progress the day. He's trying to tell the party to one, but it won't work. And for some reason, it just keeps like doing something. Sorry, I can't tell the whole story. Of course, next day. Oh, you guys are playing all the time. Yeah, I killed characters in the first session before. Why can't you? You know the street. Well, you now actually. He killed you in the first session. That was more suicide than kill. That was more suicide. You don't want to play that character. Um, <laughs> More of I want to use them to test to see what it was like. Oh, I mean, yeah, I was changing the year. Anyway, <laughs> years pass. You're still in the forest. You're still, you're still caught in traffic in this wagon thing. Um, how fucking felt the video? It's, it's like a kind of dry 60 degrees out today. Oh, that's nice. And yeah, the Celsius is Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Okay. The sun is actually peeking over the cloud of dust that seems to catch at the top of the forest and kind of obscure it. And you begin venturing through, and there's a few experienced members on the wagon train that do know the path that isn't clearly marked, obviously, but kind of with their intuition and their know how, they do know how to follow. And these towering corpses of trees are densely packed and kind of falling around each other some places and making this weird kind of landscape that makes you just feel small 
in comparison to the tree. It's almost like sometimes it feels like there's an actual structure to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're probably not the most arsenal. Almost a trick of the eye. Sometimes you swear you hear footsteps of the giants that once roamed this land. I'll keep an ear open and see if I can hear the giants that currently running on as well. And I do all the traveling. A strange sound is heard occasionally in the, in the forest. Uh, almost like it sounds like a cawing of a bird mixed with the shriek of a child. It's like our and it takes all of you a long time to notice that it's actually the giant trees rubbing together Ooh. as the wind passes through, creating this cacophony of a tree. I like that a lot. Puts everyone on edge, on edge for a while, and those that have traveled through before kind of laugh and purposely didn't say anything. Just to kind of scare everyone a little bit just with shits and giggles. I think it's about to be sour. <clears throat> Rusty, make a perception check since you're kind of looking around. I want to see giants. Good start to the game. That is... You don't see anything with these trees and the occasional gust of dust getting kicked up around their base. Around midday, the wagon train stops so everyone can start stretching and drinking water and whatnot. Anyone want to do anything? Um, I thought so we get some petrified wood, but I'm thinking twice about that because with giants. Don't give them the thing that take care of. Yeah, I'm not going to stray too far off the path or anything. I'm just going to kind of sit out the floor, sit up against the wagon, eat my breakfast of bread and whatnot, and stew and such. Okay. Chat a bit about the forest, I guess. So, conveniently, you are all kind of gathered around. Oh, name escapes me. All kind of gathered around. Yeah, what the fuck? How his character is now. Deleting myself. So I can play a wizard. So I can play a wizard! The bar just the you play wizard will shoot you. Around Otto's part. <laughs> Hang on a second, how did I get there? Yeah. Huh? Really? Why is everybody around mine? Besides you. I know. You're a shit for people buying drinks. No, they just kind of, kind of, it's the stopping with water and stretching and stuff. And they were kind of walking towards the middle where it would be safer. Where yeah. your car also provides being a guest on this wagon train. Alright, alright. And, Rusty, since you were looking out, you see someone, like, coming over one of the piles of dust, and they're, like, holding their chest like this. And they're, like, he's, like, dragging another person, like, behind him by the hand. Out of the forest? Out from, like, up one of the, like, embankments of dust that's coasted up along one of the giant trees. One of the corpses of these giant trees. I'm gonna get some other attention. Point other people. Well, there are plenty of people around. So I, I just kind of like grab someone's probably like and seeing how tall my character is. Just kind of like there. Hmm? How well do we know each other? I know we talked about knowing each other. Like you've been okay. traveling. Are we on our first same basis? You've been traveling for fifty days, and in this kind of place, fifty days in a lifetime. 
You're on a first name basis, I assume. Okay. <laughs> Unless you don't want to. Unless you don't really want to be, but all you all seem kind of friendly in your own way, so I feel like people have introduced yourselves and kind of having party here. With there. Everybody's names except you. Except for me. Rusty. It's still weird not being called Duzark. Again. I miss I miss Alistair so much. What's your name? You never got a resolve. I can't remember, figure out how I want it to pronounce. Uh, Blackburn. Blackburn? Okay. I said, I've been thinking LeBron. Yeah, see, I've been thinking LeBron because he's a. Because he, he yeah, yeah. pronounced it that way, then I sure. And I just mimic that. LeBron James. It's spelled like yeah. L A. I got it. I got it. What's your name? Carlo. <laughs> Are you love? I like that one. I wish I could use a library. Um, I can get Sammy's and Matt's another day. I can do them right now. Yeah, I, I have them if you want. Matt's Isaac Newton, Sammy's and Lucille Peters. This is still Sam Bucky. Peter! What? Why did Peter? So, <laughs> which two? Sammy. Her name is Lucille. Peters. Oh, Peters? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll correct that. Peters. She said Peters. That might be an autocorrect on my end, but it says Peters. Uh, All right, I'm going Peters in that manner. And then Shoda. Yeah, Shoda. Shoes. Also, kind of stretching, looking about. He was kind of tentatively going to go up and touch one of the trees. And he's like halfway in this embankment as these two people come tumbling over it. And he like backs up and kind of runs back to you <laughs> as that happens. They both look bedraggled. They're like just like <sighs> towards the wagon train. What kind of people are they? Their clothes are in tatters. They look to be a race. Humanoid to some degree. I'll get in front of the wagon, kind of defensive weapon out. I'm not gonna make a move towards them or against them. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, since I have my like, sword always like, on my back, I'm going to have my hand and my whip, but it's usually wrapped around me with, like a belt, just in case they do something, I can just easily... I'm, I'm going to prepare two glasses of water for these soldiers. we got to pay up. Soldiers. Soldiers of the war. I have a question. Who has the thickest hair on all the PCs that have hair. Me, 100%. Probably. Me. You have scale. Uh, right? It would be a toss yeah, between skills him, I would say, and Lucille. All right, so Luke, you might have or Oz. LeBron or Lucille? So, Lucille, that is where my, in her hair, just enough, that's where my flies perk, okay. so I can watch at all times. Okay, fair enough. I took the light. What does her character look like, each other? Person. Yeah, okay, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Alright. So, they are not going to stop their advance. They're about 20 foot away. Hey, hey, hold, hold up straight here. Hold up. They don't stop. They're just kind of still lumbering. This weird, like, almost... They look like they're walking in pain. Do these people look... Undead? Like zombies? Because that was mentioned. No, they're yeah. in they look, they're they're in flesh. <laughs> they appear to be rosy. They're breathing. Though, one of, they do have a weird old glazed over look in their eyes. That could be due to them struggling out here for a long period of time, or anything else, really. Oh my god, I know what it's from. You remember that owl movie? They, they gazed at the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that movie existed. That was the book series. <laughs> it was a movie too. I've read the books. The same person who wrote Warriors. Anyway, I forgot that movie existed. Warriors is better. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of like take my canteen and kind of throw it and see if that stops. If we're just thirsty and we're looking for water. Because I'm walking up with two glasses of water. 
Yeah, I don't want them to get like I want to know you mean that stops like dead in his tracks, and that kind of like glazed over look in his eyes kind of retracts, and it, as you see, he like as he's trying to speak, his tongue is just dry, and he can't form words properly, and just the faintest of yeah, is what you can kind of make out as he like. It looks like he's struggling not to move. While also, like, holding the other one back. He's still trying to push past him towards you guys. Uh, these, these men need water. Quick. Shit. Um, I will... Whoa, whoa. 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 I got froze. Oh, wait, no, I'll take the others. Okay. So, so Cool. Well, I'm not gonna shoot while they're going up, so. You should yeah, like, people block my shot. Did nobody from like the brigade warn, warn us about like fucking random people walking out of the woods? Not random people, fucking <laughs> any dangers of like wagoning. None of you asked anything, so they assumed you already knew. I mean, we've been on it for 50 days. Well, the, the, well, what we know? Like, the forest in general is like new territory. Oh, okay. okay. None of you have been here. A few people have gone through it that yeah, have happened on the trail. Um, in the waste itself, skeletons sometimes do pop up, zombies do sometimes pop up. Is it just the seed feed of the feed? Thieves are the seed. Bandits sometimes happen. The people like are this, car- this caravan are have been on it for the most part. So you haven't had to worry about any of that stuff too much. Alright. That doesn't matter. You both are getting you lost money. Ain't scared. Alright. Who's ready for a fight? I am. So Ready to deal what does that have to be on you, Connor? This is what fucks me up. You just scared. I just think it's funny. <laughs> your child's walking you trying to be a good person and get fucking whacked. Nah. The reason I handed off one cup is so I can draw a bitch. Hey, yeah. No. no. <laughs> no he's gonna make. So, it's gonna be growl checks for the both of you. And they're both gonna lunge at you. We'll see. What's the graphic checks again? So, so athletics, athletics. No, you gotta make an athletics or an a- or an acrobatics to resist their athletics. I'll oh, be an athletics. athletics. <laughs> Why? Actually, why Connor? Team twenty. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I'm thinking one to one. Top tier for one strength. We're uh, I'm bend I'm I'm bending some rules, but it's gonna be fun. Relax. Yeah, the United Domination. One just... strength penalty away from death at all times. He choked. Living on the edge. Sixteen. <laughs> Sixteen. Yeah. So as they both kind of sort of forward at you, as they kind of lean their head around like this, you see this kind of bulge on the back of their neck about this far out, and it's just like this black, almost just ingrown engorged whatever the fuck is on it. Like, something is in there. Oh, He's all just kind of like, that. back, kind of the water just goes like, onto the dust. Shoot back up. I'll take a sip. Do I see this too? You both saw it. Yeah, you right. both see that as they lunge towards you. I will so fire. Well, I'm going to... Roll the hit. What I was going to do is, I'm going to I'll shoot too. quickly pull out my whip oh, and yes. uh, aim for mid. that spot. And then, yeah, you walked right up to him within range of them to grab you. So I'm gonna aim for that black spot on the back of one of them. Okay. I'll 23 to hit? Yep. You're definitely hitting. You wanna hit the one that one. Which one do you wanna hit? Let's go uh, back and shoot. I'll hit the one who got. Actually, I'll the one that got a swimming back. I got the next okay. one. Cool. Jesus Christ, what kind of? I wanna step back and shoot then. So I'm not at disadvantage, maybe. He will get. He will launch at you again. Then. When will I get my turn? Well, you're choosing to move before you do your thing, which puts you out of range of him, which allows him to use his reaction to attack. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's like an attack opportunity. I'm still gonna move out of range. Yeah, that's right. Okay. okay. 
it's an attack of opportunity. Like, that. okay, that's what you should have. Yeah. You said you lunged at me. I was like, wait, he's he chasing, chasing me again. Like the uh, fuck? Resist, please. Resist what? Acrobatics or a slip here. Oh, he's trying to grapple me again. Yeah. Shit. I don't have any. Eighteen. Oh. Eighteen. I just rolled a 15, so you barely managed to finally go for it. You just kind of yeah. sidestep onto the ground, kind of skid to the side. Alright. And then... So, just roll a hit without disadvantage. So, you hit, roll damage, you hit, roll damage as a nat 20, pretty, pretty. You love them. And when you roll the nat 20... <laughs> Shoot the water. <laughs> I tried to shoot it with the water. You shoot water in him? Yeah, no. You don't know what the fuck just happened in the chamber, but it is fucked. <laughs> what did he roll? He rolled a now one. Rip. Yeah. Alright, so what did you roll? He got 11 damage. Yep. Damn! This is a lever action rifle. This thing don't fuck around. No, it do not. I only got 8. Oh, max 10 they should land with. <laughs> Should be cold shot. I did. So you shoot at the one and it just falls on top of the other one. What did you roll? I rolled damage. Eight damage. I rolled four plus four. And you just laugh at the one the brain just goes and it blows behind and slumps forward. The other one just you slash across the chest with the whip and you just see underneath the rag and clothes it's just like an emaciated form that's yeah, pale. Like, I thought it was aiming at the black spot. Yeah, oh, the black spot. So it kind of you whip, whip, whips around and pss, right in the back of his neck. Uh, you did what I was going to do. Like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. And he blasts for this. It just, whatever was on the back of his neck, just pops like a pimple or is it just. <laughs> Well, and just collapses face down and Every- from that hole it's just blood so- don't shoot that man that was I think a quick second in time <laughs> no more comic they're rolling it super casing one of the wa- like one of the like people that watched the wagon was like running over, rifle in hand. Anyone know what that black stuff on the back of their necks was? I just popped his. Because right. I just like quickly after I was done with my whip, just wrapped it back in my wrap and take my gun back to my truck. Sticks are up, start tinkering. Uh, make a tinker tool check here. So that would be a, a sleight of hand check. I think to repair it. Sleight of hand. It's dex oh, plus proficiency. Oh, it's dex plus proficiency? Dex plus proficiency, then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For sure, repair. Wait, no, you're a force you are. Fourteen. <laughs> uh, there was a weird one of the bullet actually was like only half in. It's cock in it. And so it's just like when it went to fire, the cylinder didn't even rotate. And you're lucky the dude just fucking exploded in your face. Holy shit. The hammer almost fucking busted. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, he kind of like turns the man around with a rifle and you see the one that had his head exploded with like that black bump. Starts going like in like this tightness like six eyed fucking bug just kind of like I'd like to shoot it. Roll a hit. As it starts just like degorging itself out of the skin. Yeah, fuck that. Well, that's a 10. It's red. That's disgusting. 13 points of damage. It just explodes. Well, this is my lever action. Yeah, it's okay. It just explodes along the rest of the neck. <laughs> that was a little excessive. No, it wasn't. You gotta be careful going into the dust. So does that mean he is dead or is he alive since I got that thing off of his neck? He's dead. Oh, he's he now, dude. 
<laughs> no, not the guy that. It, I think no, all of his blood like, became the, like that whole where it got exploded. Here and kind of like that then like blood flip, flip, flips him over a little bit with his rifle. I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure he's dead. Doesn't look good. I like his chances. I'm gonna go pick up again. Don't like it. Yeah. I can move. Listen, anyone that's run around in the dust like that probably isn't a good person to begin with, so I wouldn't put too much heart their way. You do them a favor by ending their life. The ticks get in you, they don't go out. They just jump around from body to body. Rarely see even people. People just know better not to go traipsing around. What were those stories? Thank you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Um, making them, if you want to like try to figure out like any identifiers, make an investigation check. I'm not going to look at them. Well, that would be perception. If you're like just yeah. looking like hands on at the investigation. Ah, uh, yeah, the bugs are dead. Oh, okay. that's good. Is it about this? That's an eight. An eight? <laughs> not the pockets as such. You actually do in the. Right pocket of one, you find a wallet. Then you kind of open it up and you see inside of one of the pockets this weird paper you've never seen before. And it has a name on the paper. It says Dixon Strip. And it has like a picture of like a barrel on the bottom of it. And... Hmm. I don't know what that means, but... Hey, does this mean anything to you? I will ask the man who came over to assist. It's script from a waterfall. Easy to replace the money. <laughs> Looks like one of the Dixons. What else? Yeah, it's about five long, I think, if it's taken this area. Not in the forest, but... A little bit west, mm. more towards Ruby. Anything else in the wallet? Ah, uh, you find a razor blade. Not really anything else. He wouldn't have a lot that he could take with him. Oh, uh, I have a Dixon script one. Oh, there is there is five there is five. Okay, script there. I'll tell that to you, maybe. Wonder what made him want to leave. Well, from how people have been talking about those water farms, don't really wonder that much at all. Me and my family grew up in one for the most part of my life. Hmm. I got out just fine. Hmm. Well, I guess he can't even somehow, can he? Yeah. Bad way to go. Risk, same reason it did. Might have been worth it to them. I don't know. The waste does some weird things, but there's one good thing that came about it. Hmm? You got five script in a wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, while with the calls, I'll just want to help me put these boys in the ground. Yep. You like digging, right? <laughs> Points over to Isaac. Fucking loved it. Put him up. And within really quickly a hole in Doug. Uh the small cobalt boy showed that it helped dig as well. Seems he, like he's good at it. Did he see all that? Yeah. He seems okay? Yeah. That's good. A little rattled, but not in like a laughing way, it looks like. Nah, he was prepped for the dangers of the well, world. Well, it surprised the shit out of him, but... Yeah. You know in Scottfield, you're taught... Scottfield, you're taught to... You're taught that the outside world is dangerous and bad, so... He did prob... He did probably prep... He does probably have some sort of... Know about what he was supposed to be expecting. He knows he knows to see the goddamn path. I'm glad we found out for a while the goddamn path. Nah, that's fine. He's got a pistol. 
Good. I'm glad the child has a pistol. Yeah. Told you. Not like a child. Child. Yeah, child. Seven year old. He's a one year old. In cobalt years, that's like quite too old to me. Yeah. You guys are around the same age. It's seven year old. Yeah. I'm 28, dog. My character's got yeah, my family. Yeah, I got tall ass family. Yeah. Connor decided to adventure with his son and decided Actually, to. I'm going to have a character one. Well, you make this. Y'all be on your side. Well, you hear the. Which is the signal from up front to say the wagon train is going to be moving on. There you go. All right. Hey. Well, do you believe in anything? Say the prayer to him. I will. That sucks. Yes, yeah, sir. You pray for him. I know we can go over to the people in the east. They're in the army? Like. Mm -hmm. There aren't really any. Another real veneration would be for nature, one of the moons, or the sun itself. That would be the sun. The sun is a very, very evil thing in this world, Luke. Oh. Um, you could pray for the sun to not like the so, sun. I should have brought this up earlier. There are two moons. There's Lumis and Noctis. You said Lumis? Yeah. Lumis oh. is Lumis. considered healing. Very light. Uh, and like that sort of thing. Whereas Noctis is... Is that calm. Yeah. Okay. Noctis is a calm. Benign kind of... Not empty. Not... Bad nor good, just peaceful place. So think of like Loomis as like an active good and healing, whereas Noctis is the absence of pain to begin with. I, I in like a kind of veneration sense. And then the nature is venerated as by different locales. The stone giants worship a different than the hill giants and vice versa. The train continue forward. And for the next two day journey, nothing out of the ordinary will happen. Oh, we love those cases. If there's anything you'd like to do or look around or ask, another two days you can about the forest or look for anything else around in particular. Um, me and my boys will do a little adventure in one like part. What you gonna do? Just kind of see the sights. Like, go see if we can find cool shit. So are you gonna, like, go over, like, the kind of, like, embankment that exists around from the trees? Yeah, I mean, just look around. We can okay. burrow, so we might burrow every now and then. Make an investigation check. Let's see if you can find any items of note. Eleven. Eleven. You actually do find something weird on the midday rest of the second day. It's the only thing that wasn't just kind of bland and dusty tree around you. You found a wicker basket. And it had now very dry, but moss in it. The kind that you would filter into water. Mm. And the basket. It has a name on it. And like a little ribbon on the side of like the handle. And the name is Sheldon. Sheldon. Fucking auto correct chance of the spell binding. Melvin is a spell binding. Yep. Yeah. Don't love spell bindings. We need to belong to you, Jack. I don't know, but uh, if it's out here, it's fair game. 
Well, yeah, I found these keepers. I wasn't saying I wasn't going to take it. Oh, shit. There's nobody around. There's nobody on the train this time, Sheldon. No, yeah, I mean, it must be a shame to lose that much moss. Yeah, it looks like a day, almost a few days by the water. It's a good sign, boy. Give him a little the attaboy. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll keep it in case we find anybody named Sheldon. I'm not taking it or anything, just going to return it later. Yeah, what is the dog like that? This keeper, yeah, yeah, it's all going forward. Listen, you may be a little bit more chaotic, where his mother was a little bit more vindictive. It's he, he hasn't he hasn't let loose fully yet. Fine, unless you want it to be more. Well, well, I mean, we didn't get to talk about the fam, so we kind of brushed over that because everybody wants to start. So. Send it, boy. Send it. But you can tell, like, he's probably just going to keep it. Take the red basket. I mean, we gather, we gather herbs and food, so that'll come in handy. And as he kind of, like, rifling through, he picks up the moth, like, oh, yeah, look. And there's a um, very weird-looking mushroom that you've never seen before. I mean, it has, like, a gold tint to it. And has like an almost wavy like texture on top. And it's also like Magic. it's like a it's like a this it's like rounded that comes down like this. Oh, this is a good one. Oh. oh. Good find as well though. Never seen a mushroom like that. Um that's an animal. Hmm. He's going to try to do certain things. We should probably be the one to be an assumption that it's not, but we should take it back with us and we'll probably find out if somebody knows something about it who escaped an area. we got a really cool looking mushroom. True, true. Might want to, uh, do they do, do they, do they know about doing like sports stamps? Doing what? Like sports stamps with mushrooms. Maybe. I mean, you can how have... often are mushrooms? That's what I'm saying. Like, oh, uh, is this like a rare occurrence? No, no, no. Funguses are actually like the, one of the main like sources of protein. In the okay, place. okay. So if, if you're asking if they don't farm fungus, yes, that, that is the thing. Okay, then yeah. You're asking tripping out like. No, you. I don't know what's so much like about this world. We just kind of fucking sent it, dude. I'm, I'm kind of forcing you. What? 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 It's, it's yeah, it's like people will kind of like take it and like take oh, like, that's the stem and like let it sit and let the spores kind of like make it a I didn't know that's what that was called. I just always called that farming mushrooms. I mean, there's all different types of way that's not farming them. That's like keeping like the print of it basically. Oh. It's like it's like a fingerprint, but for mushrooms. Neat, I never knew that. Look, my dad told me about that once long ago and I forgot it. <laughs> You guys make it outside of the petrified forest. And as you follow this trail along, we didn't, we didn't even go to the visitor center? You see a lonesome sign. A post sign is kind of. In the wind that says Ruby Trail. So, you're not too far out. That was more kind of person and shoot sign. Okay, what's that? We're gonna end the session there. Damn. Unless you guys want to continue, I just thought that'd be a good stopping point. I don't like. I don't like continuing with you guys. I'd love to continue. I want. I, I want to get a little bit more in depth with the world so I can. Okay. Be assimilated with it. I want to tune with the knowledge of the world. Okay. So I guess we're not going to end there. Psych. No reviews left. Yep, they're all gone. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was I was talking about like talking about more about the world. Oh, I thought you said you wanted to continue playing. No, I want I want more knowledge on the world, Lane. 
I want more ends. I wanna. Yeah, I don't mind continuing. I wanna finish fleshing out this shit. I'll just continue. <laughs> so, he wants to talk more about the world. And you still want to continue plus. And we can do both. That's what I'm gonna try and do here. Fuck the end. I'll try and lower dumping guys. Let's turn this into a walking simulator. You you walk to like an island. Oh, you walk yeah. across an yeah. island yeah. and then you can turn lower I was talking more specifics, man. I'm talking more specifics. Get, get some examples of specifics. Examples is I had a whole idea of my family that I was gonna discuss that he told me to wait till afterwards, but then we jumped into gameplay. Same with like knowledge of like I want a rump springer. What all do I actually know? Like I know I came back with my skills. Like what sites did I see? Stuff that I can like recall. I know there's a history there for that. Yeah, basically. All the stuff he told me to hold off on, and then we started playing, so now it's like, oh, fuck. I, w I, want, I want to add some color to this blank canvas. Just do what I do, just do it at random. Do it. Even though I, I basically have no color in my character. Uh, uh, Alright, so since Luke, sorry, since Matt and Sammy aren't here, I would feel more comfortable closing the session there. That's fine. But I am more than happy to talk about the world. So we can continue doing that for a bit. Does that sound good? XP. 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 You're not going to XP. It's not XP based. I thought you said we could naturally get all the right. three. You don't have milestones until we get yeah. to number three. Milestones. I feel like it's a pretty good milestone. What? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with a rush. This isn't Skyrim, Mackie. You're not gonna get level 99 sneak at the bear. All right, Mackie. Uh, that's no, fun. this is Fallout. I'm just gonna go on and feel my ass right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Back down my sneak. No, we're not gonna end the session there. I guess we're gonna talk some lore stuff. So stick around if you just want to learn about the world. Lane, I, I want to mod my 10 millimeter pistol to like kill the right. when you want. Lay it on me. All right. Question so me. All right. feel free to question me too. I'm ready. I don't know what the fuck the question you want. I haven't experienced much of the world yet. <laughs> no, me neither. I haven't That's experienced any of them. Like, like I want to know more about like a uh, like the desert area. Like, so you said there are fruits. Are they like actual fruiting trees, or are they like? Are you talking about Scawfield? Yeah, Scawfield. What do I know about Scawfield? Well, Scawfield, it's like a lot. It's like, it's like a bird. Scawfield just have a lot of Scawfield. It's a, it's a turd there. desert yeah. in a way. So like, you know how desert plants would normally not be able to grow in abundance. In this place, they do. There's a bunch of cacti that have grown to immense sizes. Okay, so that things like that. All right. These plants that normally have to try hard to survive now, easily survive, so they thrive immensely. Same with like the question of that thing game. What happens if you try to go back? Is that knowledge common, or is that just people haven't tried? It? Uh, you guys, Cause... being from there, would know. I, I said it earlier. You just lose your way, like walking back. You just get lost. Yeah. Oh, you just the can't question find it. Earlier, you it's can't. like Harry Potter. You just can't really find your way back. Okay. So... Yeah, answer that question earlier. Yeah, you so, my character. You bumsy. You made my character. Everybody was on a different page, man. Alright. Um... Like I said, anyone else wants any, like, fun things? Just ask. I'm ready. I, I, I have this setting. Do it. Okay, so now, other other thing. Bring if it. my son's able to find his way back, if I walk with him, am I capable of finding my way back if he leads me? You don't know. Okay, is that not something that anybody's tried before? Not that you've heard of. Okay, so it's something I plan on trying to go see my wife again. Is it oppressively dangerous if you just walk out into the wastes? Like, are, are you just going to get, like, ticks sprouting up all around you like that? Or the tick thing is probably more centralized to... Before the forest? Um, you have not seen anything like that in your experience outside. Okay. The waste is dangerous mainly because it is that. A person, a harsh environment. Like I said, occasionally a skeleton, a zombie, bandits, a worm. Like, things like that do tend to happen, just not frequently. As you notice, the rest of your trip through the Petrified Forest, there was nothing. That could really happen in note. Alright, I have one more question, Lane. What is the name of the mouth shadow in the section? What? 
What is the name of the mouth shadow on the second moon? There is a, a mouth shadow on the second moon. Are you sure? Oh. I'm sorry, Matthew. I, I have one son. You have one son too. Don't look upon us. Okay. So now about my fan. Four. No, I have four planets. Oh, great. You have Titan, uh, GD Prime, Arrakis, and Caladan. All right, what about okay. Rum Strata? What about it? All right, so obviously my artificer like skills came from that. Where did I go to learn the skill? Like, who did I learn under? Like... Well, you you don't have to really have been properly apprenticed even. Well, I don't. I'm not talking about that. Like, maybe <laughs> like like what what town did I go to and discover these seeds? Like, I didn't just walk out in the desert and go, "Here we I can build shit." Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Chartland. Yeah, I'm asking like specifics, like it's stuff I would have like, um, made note of, like you know, like oh, they had these type of lanterns and so and so or something like. Well, you never made it to a ruby trail because you started off of um where Scottfield is, so you kind of went up the northern like coastline more so, and went up that way. Could you possibly be Vegas? I'll put I'll put on some music alone. I keep opening dog and I open it fucking hell. Dog galaxy. It's like a hundred years. We need to stop being free. We want power. It's been like a hundred years since they stopped. Why you do this, songs? You think why you make me hungry like this? Because he's a dick. No, I haven't had dinner yet. I need to eat something. Now, like specific towns, um. If you want names, I can give you some names. So, just give me a second to put on this music because it kind of helps set the tone. I'll set the tone. Alexa, does so the light like the red? sound a lot like Helmet Jefferson's vision. First, I should have had Mel Jefferson. Yeah. 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 Listen, no. you came up with the name, Mackie. I was going to say, I thought you didn't use your accent. I would say, like, the way you describe it sounds a lot like, like Thomas Jefferson's vision for America, like, yes. like a nucleated nuclear mm-hmm. society. Is so it? what I'm wondering is, would Johnny Appleseed be a kobold, a dragonborn, or was it both? Look at both. Dead. He enjoys, the, he enjoys the simple things. Um, well, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Your... So the only, so the towns that were worth a bit, Worth a bit. All right. We're Burmouth. It's called Burmouth because the town itself is built into a giant sand dune that has this like tarp like covering that keeps the dust from falling in, but also ever expands the town as they can just make the tarp bigger. It is a place where a lot of them. Um, Innovation and drilling and stuff is done. And there is also a deep, there used to be a deep trace mine that's here. Sadly, all the trace has been mined out. But people had a bunch of random mining equipment to fuck around with. Thus, the tunneling games were born. Okay, so hold on. Stop for a second so I can type to tell me more about this. I'm so good at coming up with stuff on the spot. Yeah, it helps flush out everything to be. This is years of experience, kids. I don't recommend DMing like this at home. Yep, I've tried it. <laughs> <laughs> like, this whole city is going to be off the cuff, but I, I kind of know what I want to do with it. As soon as I said mining equipment and tarp, I knew exactly where I was going. <laughs> You say Tunnel Wars? The Tunneling Games. Or. I got a little note off you with Starving Games. The Tunneling Games. Spain. Yeah. Old Games. Strengths. Mine. Tunneling. You know what? I got to shoot three things today. Man, I hit all of them. That whip, that that was that was cool. That's at the tone of the campaign in a good way. What whip? The like the tick thing. I think that's at the tone of the campaign in a really fun way. 
Get this cat out of here. I also like to think that nobody knew I had a whip because they only, with, they only see me in the with a tiger. Oh. Uh, yeah. okay. I have one more thing about your character. Your anyway, character. so the tunneling games, think of it like a scavenger hunt. Scavenger hunt. Sure. Me, shit, I can miss one thing. Like, racing. race. Like racing, yeah. Like, like rally racing. So basically, they improvise and build new race tracks that also function as a scavenger hunt. Yeah, they gotta find like certain things at certain points. Exactly. I got you. That sounds awesome. And every time they find the thing, they hit it with their car. It's like a bag of paints, essentially. And it goes and spatters on their vehicle. That's how they know they hit something. That's how they know they picked one up. And the person that has the most colors on their vehicle by the end of it wins. Now, what if I'm colorblind? How do I know if I'm winning? You don't. Also, you know what the fun part is, Luke? What's up? You gotta get creative because it's pitch black down here. Dark vision doesn't allow you to see in color, and you gotta make sure you're not hitting the same color or bag. Otherwise, it doesn't help you, and you just hurt someone else's chances. So you gotta create light in a different way. People have done many things. They also occasionally do the water-based version of this. It's a flash. It's only been done twice. And it's because a bunch of water ganassi had a fun idea. Yes. A bunch of water ganassi flooded the tunnel. So this is a place if you want to trick out your wits. They've got mechanics. Yep. Alright. What if I'll see if it's going to get both Basically, just... Let's flood this place. That's only happened three times. And... You it all was like... Let me say three times. Yeah, because I don't have this on the one spot. Fuck you. It happened twice. <laughs> and it was only happened twice. It almost <laughs> destroyed the entire town and made it a giant sinkhole. Alright. Um... And then, what other two places to know? I only need brief descriptions, just something that I can use as, like, having my character and have something to talk about, story-wise. There's Chitin Junk. I'm trying to make that up. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. It's called Chitin Junk. You know why it's like Chitin Junk? I step up and just, like, doing that and shit the time. They're very good at harvesting the parts of beetles. Okay. And other like insect parts, obviously, but beetles in general. Or anything close. Well, you'd use chitin. It's it's hard as metal in most cases, right? You could use it in place of metal. Okay. And it's okay. kind of malleable if you get it off the insect quick enough, right? It's, you can make things out of it, like the hook of a car. Okay. Then here's you. The purple worms exist. The what? Purple worms exist. Yeah. Yeah, shit. They exist, okay. And they're coming for you. Is the brown dragon here? In the bed. Is he in a cave so Dylan can go make more bad decisions? <laughs> Stop trying to get Dylan to be a bad dragon. Look. Yeah, the only bad dragon here is my character. Hi. Prove it. Opal's just here to bad dragons. Man, you don't even know what I do behind closed doors. I wonder where you got that idea from, dude. Look, Opal's just universally bad dragons. Like, well, I think they're worse dragons than Dragonborn, actually. Is nah. Nah. Well, one can breathe fire and the other can't unless they're special with some class. I rest my case. Listen, that's sticking to normie characters, okay? Oh, and a little razzle and dazzle. Fine, if we're not sticking to normie characters in my setting of Tiger Dragon Warren, you have you may choose if you want to have each of your heads have a random personality. So you can argue with yourself if you really want to. I like that. I think I got that. My gifts. The last town is Waves. Waves. Okay. What's fun about this game, and convention, by the way, is I'm just gonna be able to name things like Kitan Junction, Ruby Trail, 
waves. Yeah, that's cool. It gives, it gives uh, that I, extra, I, like, spunk to it. Now, why is this, why is this place called waves? Well, they're in the popular pastime. Yeah, pattern. for this. Is that the line of desert surfing? It was originally called waves since on the lake. But now people meet some of the sand surfing for it. So there, there's a lake of water here. So this area. A lake of water is here? Water. Uh, so if, oh, if oh. you check the JPEG that you mailed to me, you'll be able to see it. But basically, in the middle of... Um, the blue sand? Not. <laughs> blue sand. Um, aside from the sand surfing ports, they're also the lead leaders in the engineering for flight. Their population is what? Just the bombers? Just the boomers? The saw the was not built for flying. Well, in a movie drawing called references in this entire game. Good, I love call out. So do I. Shouldn't have fucked it up. But yeah, so in the middle of Charland. Um, Tuesday, you know, but, you know, I'm not in the Charlin, the, the country you're in. Okay. If you look at the, if you look at the JPEG I sent you, there's a giant lake. Now I'm on my phone. I'm not gonna keep looking back and forth from JPEG. In the middle of Charlin, there's like a lake that looks like it's doing this. If you notice, I couldn't get it. Come, we're looking over here. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I just get you. So, this. You know, this is a giant body of what was once fresh water mm -hmm. is now a toxic mess. Oh, yeah. And the light the was the bottom. No, that's the ocean around you. Oh, uh, okay. This is. The light was literally sucked out of this thing. There's <laughs> one plant that exists that can only grow here, and it's what people make towel out of. And it's like this thing of dog tails mixed with meat. Like cat tails, sorry, cat tails, the forbidden hot dog mixed with meat. Forbidden hot dog. What's it called? The, the, the it's just it's, created that. It's like a body of thing they make pop out of it. Okay. Which is like basically a nutrient paste. Does it taste good? It has water and yeah. protein and fillingness. Yeah. I thought I was just like sweet. Um, you know, so Wave is trying to develop this technology of flight. And they have a little bit of a down where they can get above the water surface and not touch it because it's heavily it's heavily corrosive. So basically if you try to get on it, it'll just corrode whatever you have. That's why they're working on flight. And basically they got to the point where they can hover for short periods of time over it and like harvest this reed to make the bow, which is right, right. a very, very essential food all over the country, so. All right, now I got a little info for you. Yes. All right, so the food truck's name is called the Golden Sun Cup. That is named after... I made this on Discord. Who do you go, Marissa? Yes. I'd like to get right now. Discord. I want to be able to read it. I might add stuff to I want to be able to read it, to memorize it, and then I can copy it to my notes about you on the game as well. It is how we created that ocean. But, uh. Basically. Else is <laughs> but, like, actually, how, how much drinks would it take to, like, hold on? I'm just talking about birds. Nah. I haven't got anything right now. Like I said, if you want, like, backup or stuff, like, I want you to send something over Discord. If you want to talk about your family now, I can do that, though. Okay. Yeah, that's something that, like, when I say I want you to send me that on Discord, like, <clears throat> the food trucks name, those things, like, I want to be able to look at those and reference them in my notes, but I don't want to have to type them out on my phone right now. I want you to copy and paste them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I said send me that over Discord, but your family is something I do want to talk about. All right, so family-wise, so let me get down to, let me get down to our disagreement. So we changed a little bit. If you were here when I first talked about my character, I changed a little bit of that when we were on our long break. But, so I left, I left with my boy, and my wife decided that uh, leaving wasn't for her, so she's staying. And we came up with this idea and this compromise that we both do dearly love each other. 
and our love will surpass distance, time, and our whole lifespan. We were both each other's first loves. Just, you know, loving it. Anyways, anyways, we have this understanding that there's a chance I probably will never be able to return. Yeah. So we are both like on that agreement of like, yo, I just want you to if know. you find another lover, we still love each other, but obviously you, you, you found somebody else that's special in your life, yada yada, right? So like, but, so anyways, she's also keeping that option open for if Shoda returns. And obviously, I've got the journal written out, but let me get down to a little bit about her and Shoda. Um, honestly, she might emphasize the D more, you son of a bitch. I am Shoda. You know the dangerous game. Nah. You guys are just making a dangerous game. You're just gonna keep telling people to look it up, and then everyone's gonna look it up. Tom, this is like me and your character Pedro, but not emphasizing the R. What's wrong with being named Pedo? A Luke? What's wrong with Anyways. Pedo? So. I love Peter Chris. <laughs> So, uh, with the dynamic I had, my character is a little reserved around, like, I guess, non hello racist. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not really like a racist as in like a, he's just like intimidated by things that aren't what he's used to. Okay, so say humans, just say the words. He's racist to humans. Racist. But anyway, so he's a little reserved around other things until he gets comfortable. But but uh, showed us more of his like social door as he is more of a fearless hey i'm gonna go talk to that person look at this but he's also like understands the dangers i gave him his own pistol and i'm just like yo don't be scared to use this now just proper training water's fine yeah we're enjoying this journey together father son bonding all right Max said it made a battery in a second. What? What is it? Battery gas. I told you it was raining when I looked in. But, uh, come on in. Anyways, other than that. I'm sorry, Pussy. Um, he's sorry, Pussy. What is it? I keep saying I'm sorry, Pussy. Uh-oh. I'm going to call him Pussy. He's a big person. He's a big person. He's not bound to me. I'm more or less bound to him. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, he's an open spirit. Yeah, that's why I had him on this adventure. Literally going to do his own thing. Yeah, but he won't run back scared. He would have he would have alerted and then been like, yo, freeze, fool. What is it? Connor. I don't like listen, even if you don't spook easy, you see that coming over the hill, sir. It makes sense to that question for No, I was talking about having him like run behind me scared. What? He ran back to be like, look at that. Also, what did you call the Rumspringer again so I can stop calling it Rumspringer? That's what I called it. He keeps calling it Rumspringer. I don't have a name for it. I thought you had a name for it. Okay, um. It's just a time when people go do it. There's no real name for it. Um. It's just like a thing everyone knows about. I don't know the decision. Yes. Do I go? Do you let your to totally be tainted by the outside world? Do you want me to make a name for it? Do you I don't want that? I mean, I think it'd be you better than calling it from Springer. Okay. I'm not calling it. We're not calling it the show by lease. Your lease. Um, Is that good? I guess. Do you, you, you want me to like, make, make it something else? Like, the walk. The long walk. It's called the walk. The long walk is good. Sure, the long walk will do that. It's the long walk, because they do take like basically 11 years. Yeah, you took a long walk. 
and yeah, some people don't know how to find their way home because everywhere's your home now. I was one day late. What is it there? Most of the people are going to return from returning to the year best. At worst. I like to imagine they're going to one A lot of people don't even bother leaving. Why would they? Yeah. They got everything they need there. So it's a utopia. utopia, yeah. In a world that sucks, they have constant food and water. <laughs> Um, all right, all right, character from so. Mm. All right, so around being reserved, though, that's different when he's in the bar. All right, when he's when he's able to hold and keep a conversation with anything about his passions. That you cannot get the dude to shut up. Yeah, hey, you're a bar fly. I get it. Yeah, I'm a bar fly. I'll tell you about the drink. I'll tell you about the food. Also, the fact that you can take nuts from a cactus, grind it into a flower, and make bread out of it. Insane. Yeah. Fucking insane. You can make dough out of a lot of things, Connor. Yeah, fucking yeah. insane. Like, almost anything that's fiber you can make dough out of. Play life on easy mode. <laughs> Everything is bread if you grind it, right? It adds water. You can trace. You can trace. All right. Yeah. For the person. So now another thing. So... I'm going to go meal the same way. This is how the game can end. So, family-wise with Kobo, yeah, like, in Kobo this years. utopia, how long do they usually live? Like, what is oh, the Kobo outlet? Kobo's have a huge lifespan. I know that. That's why I'm asking. What's, like, the eldest Kobo? Because I told you, my goal was to live to be the eldest Kobo. A few Kobo's in fact of old age that tells you uh -oh. anything. So they're kind of... So my great 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 grandpa is alive. Yeah, maybe have a few more kids. I love it. Yeah. That's what the instruction on the best. Yeah. What having a long lifespan will do to you. Connor, you have an uncle you have a great 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 uncle who is the same age as your son. Wild. Yeah, kobolds live a long time, but they're draconic beings by nature. Like, if kobolds literally weren't hindered by the fact that they are supposed to be undereducated simpletons, Dungeon Potter, they would be unstoppable in a lot of ways. Hence the kobold union. That's like yes. how a lot of kobolds are by uh, Yeah, the kobold yeah. union is a great example of that. They got together, like, you don't have to be stupid. They got educated. They literally took over half the planet. Bargaining power. If you live to be 600, you know some shit. And yeah. you know some people. Yeah. You make ties everywhere. All right, all right. So... Say the kobolds are just... Kobolds could just be better elves. The reason elves have such an advantage over everyone else, they live longer. Even dwarves. Kobolds outlive both of them. Fuck. I was a weird little dirty titty up in this bitch. Yeah. Yeah, so basically... I'm I'm whole full style. I'm gonna I'm gonna grow up and be one of the eldest Fogel, but outside of the utopia. Okay. Boom. The oldest Maybe Kobold. there's stories told about Kobolds the dying out of the You know that look like you've heard about living outside? Well, you actually met him. He was hundred and two. Okay. His name was Clint. So Kobold. Outside of his last name section. No. He is a he was a very reserved guy. The name was what? Clint. Clint. He's a very quiet, reserved man. Very straight. <clears throat> very tall. Very cool. All right, all right, so, 102, easy. I'm already 28 in, baby. How old the hell are you? 60. Let me Google it. I don't know what else I'm at. 60 to 80, take it or leave it. Oh. Um, age. 
We're done, real Zuki. Here we come. For all of your favorite races, you said, no, 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 I'm good. I think they have an average hand human life span, but I'm 100% sure. That's what I thought the app said. You're an app. Sorry, I'm gonna jam it out of the What the fuck is it? Average weight, skin color, distinctions. Less than a century, it says. So, kind of human life span, basically. So, like 100 years. Give or take. Okay. Good years. They can survive that long, cowards. Yeah. And what about a war for? Yeah. Or just survive about two years before they're just 40 to 60. 40 to 60? Yeah, they, 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 they have, have like an average human lifespan. Oh, no shit, I didn't know that. I was yeah. trying to make a joke. I figured they just lived until they rotted. No, you're a war for a goal. You have a soul. Your body wears out. It's organic. That's what yeah, I should have been. Cobalt, cobalt don't have souls. Woo! Yeah. They do have souls. They just have a lot more space for them. I'm gonna live the longest. <laughs> Outside of the utopia. Oh, I thought you were saying like they were big shoes because they're poor. Uh -oh. My mind went when we were playing like, oh yes, yeah. they have big souls because they wear bigger shoes. Honestly, they have are really poor in my sense. Like that's the thing, right? I don't like humans. Like I said, are super far in between in this place because they wouldn't survive well. They're not hardies. They may be innovative and try hard. But they're not naturally hardy. Good question. Yo. What would be the eldest thing in like the utopia? The dragon. The dragon. Shit. Supposedly that's who keeps the land like that. Alright. No one's ever seen her, but you've heard tail. Okay, for shit. I have a gold now. Scaleutopia. Scaleutopia. It's, it's, like it's like Zootopia, but for scalies. Yeah. They're all scalies. Scalies. Instead of a fox, you it's, know. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bearded dragon, and instead of a rabbit, it's a gecko. So wacko, actually. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, it's like, where's all the reptiles in Zootopia? And they're like, oh yeah, they segregate in the city. Yeah, I heard about that on Twitter. They're like, oh, they're segregated. And everyone's like, what the <laughs> fuck, did me? Animal racism, that's worse than Chicken Little. Uh, chicken I didn't realize that but yeah, um, they said. Supposedly, she is what keeps the land fertile. And. Make a nature check. Right now? Okay. Right now. Shit. Make a nature check. You son of a bitch, make a nature check. You got Not it. you, Mackie. I'm making a nature check. I'm in the middle of typing shit. I got to keep talking real fast, <laughs> and my thumbs are sweaty. It's hot in here. It's yeah, touching my screen as fuck. It's like 79 on really hot. I got a 19, baby. 19. So, you do know about the natural connection between Trace and the, the land. What I get? 35. Now, oh, yeah. as you take tra tra Trace from the land, you su you're sucking away its life as you go, right? Goals. And you know, lucky. you know in your home oh, country, um, Scopion. Let's just take the yep. same path. I'm trying to talk. You know in Scopion, people aren't allowed to bring trades in. And you're not allowed to yeah. harm your trades or even use it. Take your shoes off on the doormat. And maybe that had something to do with its abundance. Maybe the trace hasn't been taken from this land in a lot of places. Maybe that's why the dragon isn't let outsiders in. Yeah, she saw what they did to the other places. Who knows? Ooh. That's expensive. Oh, it's uh, bad taxidermy. Bad, bad dragon. taxidermy. What? I love bad, bad dragon. taxidermy. Mm. I don't think that's tacit or man. I'm pretty sure that's property value. No, it's not. This is what it was supposed to be. <laughs> okay, yeah, that is bad tacit or So, what would be, other than a river, what would be like, uh. I like that. I don't think that's a good price. It wasn't supposed to flood. Let's just ship it. I have a question. You have it. Would it be okay if my grandfather was actually invited into that place? Fuck no. Fuck it, Grandpa. In like his younger years? How many scales he got? 
Dude, you're in Scaletopia, bro. So he was somebody in the military and he was more on the peaceful side. Yeah. Yeah, Scale, he does scale only. He gave me a fun idea. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm going to make an intelligence check. In your grandfather's name, good sir. Make an intelligence. Nice. Put them away. Luke, don't don't do that. You see that cup over there? Yeah. You grab the D20 out of that. Grab the D20 out of this cup. Those dice have been getting stronger every time someone cheats. Oh, every good. time someone cheats. And I have a plus one to ten. Ten. Your grandpa talks like he's been there. But at the same time, he just he said it's what he's heard from other people, so probably not. Your grandpa did Your grandpa has a lot of tail though. So it's amazing to think that dude did all that in seven years. Yeah, I do got a question. What would be like knowledge that'd be passed down either through like family or through just like elder things that are like, I've seen the back of the sun. What? Yeah. What are you asking me? Basically, oh, the Lord. things here live till they're pretty fucking old, and there's a solid line of generations. Like, what is knowledge that's passed down? Like, you know, there's obviously rumors about the dragon. What about, like, uh, things that they do share? Like, the. Like, do they do things for fun? Like, what what do they do to occupy their time? Like, how long? It, oh, family has been here for a while. Do they just garden and take care of the land? And that's essentially yeah. Thirty thousand like, really, years of that. Really, all that you would know about it is taking it like that's Everybody just tends to. It's more. Land. It's more seen as like a guardian deity than it is a a person or thing. But yeah, but I'm talking like the people in general. Like, what? what oh. Like, yeah, like obviously, like okay, let's say, let's say, like my like, great, 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 great grandpa's like ten thousand years old. Okay, well, that, like five hundred to seven hundred is like the expected life. Like that's the life. Okay, old. say, say my great, great grandpa is three hundred years old. What has he done for three hundred years here, other than take care of the land? Well, everyone kind of has hobbies. Probably some bird watching, maybe some knitting. Probably learn to play a lot of instruments. He's a one man band, man. Okay. Well, it's a utopia, Tom. Huh? Really wants for anything. Okay. Any, like, uh. So it's just basically people sitting around doing hippie shit and. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Literally, it's just people. Being that they're, they're they're never really challenged. Like, well, I didn't know if there was like a history that people passed down of like how they got here or well, like. Oh, you want to know that? Shit, like yeah, like like. So, as I said at the beginning of the game, you all would know that this place used to be the homeland of the giants. It was then cast from the world tree. And fell to the roots. The descendants of these giants were the native inhabitants of this place. And then the god gave up on humanity and cast the material plane down to the same waste bin of the world that is the roots of the tree. And it kind of it so happens that the material plane you were all from fell on top of this. Not in a physical, but a more of a metaphysical way. And those fucking elves and thinking that natural magic is abundant and we can just use the environment and magic, we can power anything with it. Soon came to realize that magic was finite down here. Drop hills to the society. And only lasted a little bit as natural energy of nature can be used. They just happen to use almost all of it in Charlotte and the neighboring country. And yeah, really the story of this place. Uh, now, that's why I said no one really knows how long people have been here. And it's been a very it? long time, just in general. This is going, but this is going to uh, be. So no one really is old enough to even recall 
having been put down here. It's been at least, at least a few thousand years, probably more. No one has an exact time, not even, nobody fucking knows. What do you mean? Because when it happened too, not everybody was really organized. The only major cities that stayed up were some of the elven ones in Charland. And they fell to ruin, so no one really knows. But in Skullfilm, most people postulate, sorry, think that it would have been sometime earlier on in this period where the segregation was put in place between the scaled ones and the not scaled ones. So that's probably when this nation closed itself off is somewhere earlier on in the lifespan of the place getting fucked over by the high elves, but no one really knows. Okay. Do so people more. like elves? Elves like elves and dwarves like elves and I don't know, people are individual. It doesn't really matter what race you are. I didn't know if there's like asshole. Okay, there's like racism in your house and games. And I just want to know, like, like is there like my radical views of wanting to leave? Everybody's just mind controlled to stay here because they think it's a happy place. It is a happy place. My point exactly. Nobody has any um, issues. And it's yeah. Fun. But that's the thing. It's genuinely not like mind control or anything. It's just why would I leave? Yeah, I know. That's why, that's why I'm just like, no, mind control people don't people understand. You're in the Garden of Eden. Why the fuck do you want to go? Yeah. That's yeah. why That's why I was, I was just like, let's, because my person, he wanted to leave, you know, he's got the taste of the world, whatever. And it's just one of those things where it's just like he's. I, I've got more of a reason now to be like, no, yeah, this place is pretty fucked up. Like, it's beautiful, it's great, it's one of the best places I've ever been and will ever be. And then it's just like, but it's like, some things can be too good to be true, and everybody else is like mind wiped to that. They're like, nah, it's just a good thing. I mean, like, nah, it can't just be a good thing. There's a catch, we just don't know it. I mean, this you all question. talk about being here for a long time. I was just having to... Why can't we come back? That is a good question my character is wondering as well. Because, like, yeah, why, why the arbitrary limit of 16? Yeah, like, because, why like, the... You see too much and you might get power hungry. I... My yeah. character honestly... Well, probably come like, back and just want to destroy like, it. Go to the trace or, like, fuck you or something. Neither really know the answer. Right, that's, yeah, the that's why my character made up that story, because he's like, I fucking know. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Any more? Give it to me. Yeah, you ready. Not really, I asked him. Hey guys, if you go to our Patreon, <laughs> you fund my Ducati. I'm going to buy some of it. some Ducati. It's it's like a bidet. They build it on the shower. They build it up with the box on the meat bugs. Speaking of bidets, I hope they open it. Hey, anybody else like want to know stuff? That's where just here. Like, keep throwing them at me. I can keep going. I'm going kayaking tomorrow. I decided I want to do that. I don't know how questions were. I'm not, like... That's the thing, Mackie. The reason... Look, I wanted to get you guys through the forest and stuff today. That's all I planned on doing. I wanted to give you guys, like, that little start of get you talk to each other. And then... We didn't even a little play. Character. I feel like I didn't interact with Dylan's character or Sandy's character. Well, you didn't much. interact with Dylan's character because Dylan's in a box. Yes, that is true. Dylan is in a box. Don't worry, he's gonna be dropped off at the same doorstep you guys are going to. Oh, like the only question I have. Is it safe? In the fact. Who's my address? You're gonna be. <laughs> Dylan, that's you and Jeff Dolly and asked you to take it there. Oh boy, well, I'm I just I'm have strong one question. question so. <laughs> There's one other thing I want about this. So tall are you? Nobody is expecting where it's getting dropped off. Nope. It's just it's going like all just spontaneity. <laughs> exactly. You can drop the robot in the ravine. And just leave, leave it there. Oh, it's fucking great. You drop it down a kid and you just leave it. The best part is um, he doesn't have to eat either. <laughs> oh, it's so great. So, great fun to be over. By the way, towards the south of where you live as well, um, in Ilan. it is kind of more verdant and there's more fruiting things as well. If they have... Carefully cultivated the trait there. 
and made it strong enough to support like vegetation. That was a question I had actually. How much traits would it take to turn the acid pool back into normal water? Um, You'd have to actually fix the soil underneath. Fucking need magic for that shit. That's what the trace is for, bitch. Fuck magic for that shit. Nah, you just need a backhoe, uh... Just shove, like, a trace, like... You got two really good diggers here. You could probably, like, dig along the coastline, start putting, like, some trace walls in. No, uh, once trace is actually just... removed from the earth, it can't be planted back. It loses its Are you sure you haven't played Endless Legends? 100%. You've talked about it before, but... Why is this part of it? Pretty sucks. Have you played Endless Legend? No. Have you played PlayStation 13? Yes, I have. Three times. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Fall. Yeah, sure. Let's, no, let's but, talk uh, about. You know, the deeper it's just slowed up, caused it actually to pass patch linearly instead of macro linearly. Yeah. Yeah. The daddies make the smart ones. Of course. Mm. Why don't we just talk, well, talk about Tuesdays? We'll talk about Tuesday. All the Fallout stuff. I joined that Discord. It is so cool. They're such nice people. Um, anyone watching? They're in the rabbit hole I fell down. It's called Fallout Equestria. There are novels written about the Fallout universe mixed with the My Little Pony universe. It is phenomenal. In like, a, if you want a good read, I genuinely suggest it. It is something else. Did you buy their own covers? I buy it. I'm thinking about it. It's awesome. The horse, the, 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 the pig sits on the moon. Which is like the best setting in Fallout, is the moon. There's monsters on the moon. Monsters on the moon? They, don't they, they the have moon. bad sounds. They have power saddles. That's sick. They, they wield guns with literally telepathy through their unicorn horns. That sounds it's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. The overmares instead of the overseers, they're called stables instead of vaults. Mr. Horse! Instead of Mr. House, it's Mr. Horse. New Pegasus. Robronco. Robronco. Like, this stuff, I can't make this stuff up. It is a creative, like, they, they are so creative with it. it, it it's awesome. This is like a, like, I love just creativity. I love seeing people actually make something unique. The thing that breaks me every time, though, is These people have. the unclaimed the yeah. picture they have Making food. of, like, bring my little okay. pony ass. Are you done? Well, I've, I've gotten my stuff filled out. Basically, everything I have to send to you. So, and any other questions for just the riots we play, baby? Um, if the audience ever has any questions, by the way, you can always send me a whisper. I'm always down. So, so shout out to the audience. Shout out to the tabletop audience. You like jazz. Oh, yeah. uh, shout out to tabletop audience.com and anyway, Real Fantasy for letting me use the great music. You're all are wonderful. You can check the links in my socials. Also, follow me on Twitter. It's there. Oh, uh, see you later. Thanks for watching. Uh, <laughs> Start to the epilepsy. Yelky jazz. You're